Fire in your soul. Fire in your spirit introduction. I heard some freaky new age guys at places like the Resistance Esoteric Radio and Red Ice Radio talking about a bunch of deep new age stuff. I'm always looking for one defining idea. The most profound thing in life is. Find the natural fire in your free spirit. Shoot it out of yourself every day like Michelangelo did. His ideal life was to sit in a yard and eat bread and wine while sculpting stone. He lived to almost 91 years in the primitive, unhealthy Middle Ages when a bunch of plagues were going around. Chapter 1 Enlightenment is living by soul slash free spirit. My search for enlightenment 1 My search for enlightenment started the same way any young man or woman searches for it. They start out with good intentions and buy into the paternalistic paradigm of life in society. I was brainwashed enough to think that somebody, some ideology, some religion or some institution out there knew something more about life than I did and I wanted to learn it so the most natural thing for a well-intentioned, naive intellectual seeker within the system to do was to go to college and major in psychology which is what I did all the way to the doctorate level until I got strong enough to realize it was a bunch of phony, useless knowledge that follows the capitalist model of bureaucracy to organize itself into a bunch of discrete subfields when anybody who knows anything knows that human function, intelligence, and wisdom is global. You are one holistic being and that's it. You can't be broken down into discrete parts. They use the capitalist model of expansion in order to perpetuate themselves. Other than the organic mapping of the brain which is the only useful part of the field, they have to justify their existence so they do all kinds of useless studies and create all kinds of new syndromes, articles, and books that add nothing to understanding the human soul or the human condition. It's all verbal diarrhea with every finding in every study described by weak qualifiers such as can, could, should, may, might, tend, influence, tendency, trend, likely, probable, possible, possibly, maybe, conceivable, significant, etc. because the truth is that you can't make accurate predictions about human behavior and you can't learn about the human soul by doing quantitative as opposed to qualitative research, studying people or yourself as individuals one by one called case studies, so. For people who know what's going on, it's all reduced to discrete, meaningless, one-liner knowledge with less wisdom than the common sense one-liners they wrote about in the book of Proverbs 2,500 years ago. Many people are fooled into thinking there's some deep, profound stuff happening in this so-called academic field of psychology but wise people know that it's an illusion put forth by the social science academia industry. That's what they bank on, naive people thinking they know something deep and profound about life so they can pretend to be wise and make money off them but they're not. They just know some dry, low-level theories they learned in school like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The theory looks noble on paper with man supposedly having these higher-order needs of actualization but the problem is how do you apply this to life as lived in the real world day by day when the average citizen just wants to make enough money so he that he can drive a big car, watch his big screen TV and eat junk food in peace. How exactly do I use Skinner's concept of operant conditioning in my day-to-day -day life? Am I just like a stupid monkey who'll do anything for an external reward like food or money? Does the monkey get tired of food in what the economists call the law of diminishing returns? Does the monkey have a unique soul or the freedom to refuse the reward just cause he feels like it? What if I don't give a damn about the reward system of the world beyond what I need for the basics of comfort? What if I think that the pursuit of material excess is the cause of the imminent destruction of modern Western society rather than what I should aspire to in order to be successful as the money-making shows on CNBC tell me every night? What if I have a soul and live to honor it over and above the capitalist system the advertising machine wants me to buy into? What about experience with real people in the real world or doing something on your own that takes guts, challenge, originality, and toughness? That's where you really learn about life. The social sciences, and new ageism, is a big fantasy land created out of thin air and now touted as cutting edge wisdom about how life works and is lived. Smart people are living their lives, getting some action and sensations out of the deal, not listening to other people who pretend to be wise, 
buying into their crap like the relatively new concept of emotional intelligence for one. I have one unitary intelligence that's always there in my essence which houses my unchanging consciousness, not a separate category of academic intelligence, practical intelligence, and emotional intelligence as all these phony life experts calling themselves psychologists buy into then cheer lead for. I followed my intuition before I had all that formal education knowledge and followed it after. I had to go out and see it all for myself before I realized it was a big delusion like the fairy tale the emperor has no clothes where everybody's pretending the new clothes are wise, happen and stuff except for the kid who's the only one in the bunch who sees past all these bumbling conformist clones, none of whom have the guts to see the truth for what it is or speak it. I think the status system of the world is a bunch of crap with people trying to put on phony airs about how special and superior they are when I know perfectly well all that matters in the matter of self-respect and current well-being is whether you honored yourself today and released a good load of your God-given natural, inspired energy in order to do something worthwhile to you and get that feeling of freeing yourself from the generic mundanity of the human condition. Freeing yourself from the generic mundanity of the human condition is a state of consciousness that I've observed in artists, bohemians, free spirits, and workaholics who really love what they do. You simply release a lot of your inspired energy through some activity that turns you on and slash or savor in your aesthetic sensations for a while when you're doing something that feels good such as dancing, grooving to music, singing, getting intoxicated, etc. This is riding the pulse of the beauty, power, originality, inspiration, and aesthetics inside of me to an intense level that makes me feel like I'm high on life, transcending normal day-to-day -day consciousness for a while. Normal, everyday consciousness without inspired or aesthetic exertion doesn't do anything for me. Why do you think a lot of creative people, artists, bohemians, free spirits, literature professors, musicians, and athletes like to drink alcohol and do drugs? It's the same end result. All these people are united by living or aspiring to live for the higher reaches of the romantic euphoric human experience. I want to get high on life any way I can. I can get there by running with it to do what I do best through my inspired aesthetic pursuits and I can get there by taking a shot of cocaine or drinking some cheap wine. It all leads to the same result, like Zorba the Greek dancing around the fire under the night sky catching a buzz or Van Gogh painting Starry Night, trying to capture some surreal, mystical feeling about his life. It's a blast, a release of life energy to your limits. It's all the same thing, trying to transcend the limits of the human condition. It makes you feel good. You're riding the better parts of life for a while to free yourself from the general dullness or plainness of normal everyday consciousness and all the negative stuff you could be thinking about or living through. One is considered noble, the other is considered carnal. I don't care what society says. I will eat the whole cake of life and run with it every day for as long as I can. I can do my productive, positive inspired activities then take the edge off by catching a buzz or do whatever else I want to do. My search for enlightenment too. People like me know that there are highs in life you can attain when you get engrossed in something inspired and slash or aesthetic that you really, really like to do. I get it a lot through physical activities. Whenever I work my body to near my limits, the result is always the same. I feel anywhere from good to great. I feel the same when I do my creative activities and feel as though I just blew a lot of inspired, original energy. My buddy is a guitarist. All he cares about is playing his guitar because it's his lifeblood. It makes him feel really good. You should have at least one thing in life except for sex, love, or drugs that does this for you. Nobody can come to greater enlightenment than you or me if we go all out in our experience of life both within ourselves and out in the world to figure out the meaning of it for us without censoring ourselves with all that brainwashing crap out there. After I figured out I was being massively brainwashed, I set on a course to live my own life away from everything I was raised to believe in. We are brainwashed to become achievement-oriented workaholics within the system for some illusory noble cause called success which is defined as making more money than you need and getting recognized by others for transient praise as a special person of accomplishment or position. 
Pleasure is defined for us by the advertising machine and since the mass media makes its money from advertising, it's slanted with a bias for the message the advertisers want to get across so the two go hand in hand to sell us on a particular lifestyle of endless consumption achieved through the pursuit of making enough money to enable us to pursue a life of material excess which they make you think will lead to happiness. What I generally see as the system's definition of pleasure is low-level stuff like good-tasting junk food, material goods, home decor stuff, a bigger house, fashionable clothes, hair coloring, cosmetics, big trucks, cool-looking cars, music CDs, video games, being a professional sports fan, playing golf, and plugging into pop culture entertainment. My idea of pleasure beyond the simple release of my natural inspired energy to a high, intense level is the pursuit of a few things for the euphoric sensations I get out of them and I'll leave it at that in order to keep this book georated and politically correct. If you have a good, strong soul, good people will like you for who you are not for the clothes you wear, the amount of makeup and jewelry you have on or the model of your car. The rest don't matter. If somebody hangs around with you because you have a cool car or they think you're popular and it will make them more popular, they're not true friends. Why waste your time? I am this one unitary, pure essence that is my soul. I was born this way and through my own efforts in honoring myself, I will die like this, unchanged by the world. The formula is simple. Every day, I honor who I am in my essence by releasing a good dose of my natural inspired, hedonistic, aesthetic, sensual and loving energy to an intense level to reach my inherent standard that tells me how to stay close to the person I want to be. An enlightened life has two components. The noble, productive, positive, inspired side where you work hard for what you believe in because of the artist's soul most of us have within us somewhere, which is the pursuit of truth, beauty and perfection in our own way. The lusty, hedonistic, fun, relaxed, easy-going side. It's not necessarily bad or evil unless we impose it on others without their consent. It's who we are as human beings but most of us bury it away in what Freud called the subconscious mind through the superego, conscience, self-censorship, while my ID, as this free side is called, is right there, front and center, at the forefront of my conscious mind. I want to enjoy my life and I can do it without hurting anyone. I just do what I do with people who want to do it with me and leave everybody else alone. My roundabout way to enlightenment. I'm greedy. I want everything out of life. Simone de Beauvoir. My awakening started at about the age of 28 when I was a moderately successful yuppie but I had contempt for myself because I was living by an artificial standard of life imposed over the real me. I was feeling so empty about it that I decided if I stayed working as a psychology teacher, something I didn't believe in, for the next 30 years, I would waste my life. I felt I had to figure my life out for real, get off this capitalist, yuppie career track I was on to figure out what really made me tick, who I really was, what I was really born to do. I sold my house, gave most of my stuff away, packed the rest into a van then took off, wanting to see the world, what was out there, the different people and different places. I did what Jack Kerouac did in the 1950s when he went on the road which was the title of the book he wrote about his travels across the United States. At first, I didn't know exactly what I was searching for but knew that I wanted to see what was out there. I covered a lot of Canada, the United States, some of Mexico, a few Caribbean islands and some of Europe. I eventually realized I was looking for a holy grail, the answer to life, utopia on earth, Shangri-La, a place where people were more enlightened, freer, moral, peaceful, happier and moral than anywhere else like Ayn Rand's Galt's Gulch but I discovered that we're all a bunch of loner individuals who spend at least 23 hours of every day alone in our heads, our thoughts known to none but us. This is the big secret everybody is in denial about that all human lives are solitary journeys. We try to pretend that we're so connected to either a lover, a family, friends, or an in-crowd somewhere but we're really a bunch of loner blobs of flesh passing each other like ships in the night, our souls known to none but us. You can divide people into two loose categories. 
Those who know that life's journey is solitary don't sweat it and try to get on living a great life. Those who feel lonely and neurotic about being alone then destroy much of their lives searching for that mythical intimate connection with others that doesn't exist by design simply because we're stuck alone in our heads, we spend most of our time alone, other people don't particularly want to know our deepest thoughts and we don't particularly want to reveal them. It doesn't matter how intimately connected you are to lovers, family, friends, and the community at large, you're still a loner in your head known to none but you. You're the only one who can live your life. You're the only one who will determine whether it's happy, strong, and free or sad, weak and neurotic. Wherever you go, the trees are green, the dirt is brown and the sun comes up every morning. John Milton, the British poet, said man is not changed by place or time. I realized that there's nothing exotic, cool, fascinating or advanced out there that can change or improve my life and people are virtually the same everywhere, especially in a capitalist, mass media driven world. Some social scientists have identified sense of community as the number one determinant of happiness and named Denmark as the happiest country in the world because they have a socialist government that takes care of the people through social programs so they say the people feel connected as a society like they're all being taken care of by their big brother, the government. United States ranks 23rd on this list of happy countries because despite the wealth there is no sense of community at least not in the real world. There are plenty of pseudo-communities in the high-tech world as with the intimate strangers on TV, the cult of celebrity, and the virtual friends on social networking websites. In a postmodern, high-tech society like America, most people sit at home plugged into one gadget or another, envious of the images of wealth in pop culture entertainment and corporate advertising, trying to get more for themselves because this is the image of success and happiness manufactured for us by the establishment which is horrible for a sense of community which would be people befriending each other and living as happy citizens together united in sweet harmony and love which is utopia. Which doesn't exist because of the self-centered and primal nature of the human organism. Most of us think we would like to be connected to a bunch of like-minded people in a community somewhere, either the neighborhood or town we live in or some place where kindred spirits gather like the church choir or the local legion but how realistic is this in light of the fact that we are self-centered by nature and the capitalist societies we live in are always pushing us to get more money, status, stuff, and trophies for ourselves even if it means kicking the next guy to the curb? This is what competition is based on. One guy stands on the pedestal as the illusory winner in some event or capacity and all the inferior plebes worship him or her as the star. This is the paradigm we are taught to believe in as opposed to cooperation and teamwork to make everybody a winner. Eve tricked Adam then Cain killed Abel in the first few years of human existence. After that, it went straight to the Tower of Babel and Sodom and Gomorrah. We're all universes apart from each other in the private thoughts that make up our lives so I'm a superficially pleasant person and a good friend to my kindred spirits and people loyal to me but I have no delusions about any place anywhere on the planet where people are dancing in the streets together because they're so wrapped up with brotherly love and goodwill for each other except in a music video or the old time musical but they're all fake. Everybody gets lonely sometimes. We want to feel connected to other people and the human race in general but we are what we are, self-contained loner blobs of flesh, self-centered to boot. The best way to handle the existential loneliness we all feel is to get over it. Keep on living. It's all you got. I have that sanctity in my soul. Better learn this because most of your life is lived alone and it increases as you age because older people aren't considered cool anymore so younger people generally don't want to bother socializing with them just for the sake of making a transient social connection because older people can't offer them anything they might want like the possibility of sex for starters. This is reality. I assumed you wanted a dose of it by choosing to read this book. Well that's the way it is away from the warm, fuzzy delusions that the new age ideologies give you about willing it so with positive intentions then the universe will give you what you want because of the supposed vibrations you give off. I alone control of my sense of well-being. Geography and the people I'm surrounded by have nothing to do with it provided I'm in a free, safe country with a roof over my head and enough food to eat. 
Life is the fantasy everybody creates in their minds then they put on a public face which you must because you can't be too honest and real. If you are, people feel uncomfortable. They generally don't want to hear other people's fantasies and musings because they're more interested in their own which is all fine and good but where it starts to get detrimental in the real world is when people put on airs or think they're more than they actually are based on some external delusion they got from out there like they think they're a big shot because they're a doctor, they run a company or are a politician. The outside world means nothing when you're alone by yourself which is most of the time. All of these things out in the world should disappear when it's just you by yourself but some people can't separate their so-called public image from who they really are. None of it can help you when you wake up tomorrow ready to face a new day. There's just you and your decision about how to live your life for that one day of time and that's it. I've written an article called My Journey of Soul Searching Through Travel for my travel and recreation book about how I traveled until I was all traveled out and realized the source and meaning of my life was within me, not out there somewhere. I found the real, pure me then set on a course to honor it one day at a time. This is a great step to enlightenment because a lot of people think there's something out there somewhere that's gonna change or improve their lives and you generally can't be satisfied that there isn't until you've seen it all for yourself and know the truth. This is the message of the hero's journey mythologist Joseph Campbell defined about the human condition throughout all his books like the power of the myth. All journeys out into the world in all the myths ever created by man are not really adventure stories to discover what's out there. They're all metaphors for the journey of life, the journey of an individual discovering his or her true identity and their own truth away from the cultural indoctrination they were brought up to believe in. This is a trick of life that a lot of unenlightened people fall for, always thinking there's something out there over the rainbow that will somehow magically illuminate and improve their lives. When I first went to Los Angeles, I had this idea of what a cool place it must be based on all the brainwash from the movies so I took a drive down Sunset Boulevard, past La Cienega to where the nightclubs are then through Beverly Hills down the big hill to the coast and it was like so what? Sunset Boulevard is actually kinda seedy once you get east of Gower. I did it, now I know what it's really like but when I talk to some people that haven't been there, they got these utopian ideas of movie stars walking around and everybody having a good, oh, easy go in time at the beach. The people there work every day and live in ordinary houses just like we do. There's nothing special about any zip code. Los Angeles is probably 50% Latino and half of them are illegal aliens but you never see that by watching Los Angeles on TV. The image and the reality are two different things. The only way to get over illusions is to go out for yourself, see everything you want to see, go everywhere you want to go, get it all out of your system then at the end of it, come back and realize your essence as a human being has changed in any way at all. If you're like me, you would have gone out looking for that nirvana all over the place only to realize that people everywhere are fallible human beings, somewhat scared and insecure beneath their public exteriors. Nobody or nothing has the answers to my life better than me so I'll live for whatever inspiration, joy, love, and pleasure I can suck out of every day and that's as good as it can possibly get. Look at Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. She went to all kinds of magical, enchanted lands but in the end realized she had everything she wanted before she ever went there but she had to make the journey before she realized it. So did the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion. They were all afraid of discovering their true natures. I discovered I had a pure, inherent standard. Consider them both, the sea and the land, and do you not find a strange analogy to something in yourself? For as this appalling ocean surrounds the verdant land, so in the soul of man there lies one insular Tahiti, full of peace and joy, but encompassed by all the horrors of the half-known life. Herman Melville, Moby Dick over the course of several months of free living, first I discovered I had an inherent, intuitive standard inside of me that I wasn't aware existed before because my life had always been structured by the schoolwork paradigm. All my life I had either been in school, working a job or doing both at the same time. I could have done anything I wanted to do because I was free, I answered to no one or nothing but I was still getting up before noon every day, 
going through a regimen of physical activities because I really love to do them then later on in the day I would do creative intellectual activities because I really love to do them too. This is much different than doing things that I had to do in the past like go to school and study things that didn't interest me or work a job I had no real interest in. Releasing energy that is not naturally inherent to you does nothing for you in the primal aesthetic spiritual enjoyment of your life. It can even be detrimental because it wears you out and causes stress. This is the big difference between the true winners and losers of life. I'm talking about who actually loves their lives day by day because of what they do. Who's getting a thrill out of living as opposed to just generic complacency, going along with the brainwash of the world. I eventually started to realize this is who I am. This is my true identity. There's a reason I'm doing all this stuff I don't have to do. It's who I am the way I was born and who I want to be. After that, I created my soul scale for honoring my life, release a worthy amount of natural energy in the following four facets of life every day to get up to at least 80 and preferably over 85 on the scale which means that by the end of every day I will have used up 80 plus percent of the natural potential energy that was inside of me when I woke up. Inspired mostly physical and creative intellectual energy for me. Loving energy. Hedonistic, sexual energy. Hedonistic, non-sexual energy. Do this every day and I win the game of my life, the game of following my essence as a human being, releasing my natural energy like an untamed, free spirit trying to ride his life like a dancer dances to her favorite song freely without self-consciousness or a surfer rides his version of the perfect wave opening it up to go full blast for short bursts here and there because I want to because this makes me feel I'm running slash sprinting with my life, get in a good to great kick out of it all. The way through. This is the true definition for individual happiness. The hierarchy works like this. You have a roof over your head, enough money to eat every day and are in a safe country. You wake up every day with X amount of untapped, natural potential energy inside of you in those four areas I defined. If I go for a tear or good run with my life as I try to do every day, by the end of the day, I will have used up over 80% of that natural potential energy I started the day with. Do this every day of your life and you'll be strong, loose, youthful, vital, and feeling anywhere from good to great. Nobody can touch this formula as the way to maximize happiness and well-being. You can orchestrate high, euphoric feelings of well-being. You get happy when you purge all that natural energy out of your system in an inspired bohemian kind of way like you're doing it because you want to get a rush out of your life. If you keep releasing your inspired, loving, hedonistic sexual and non-sexual energy every day like you're really loving it and doing it with gusto and intensity, you belong to an elite group of people getting the most possible enjoyment out of their lives. This is the only path to transcendence in life. You can only reach so high through sitting around meditating. It takes a natural, inspired release of great amounts of physical, creative, loving, and hedonistic energy to feel high but you can purge this energy inside of you every day if you've got that bohemian, free-spirited fiber within your soul like I do, dancing through my life, not giving a f asterisk ck about anything, responsible enough to pay my way but beyond that it's all my ride to dance through freely as though I'm waltzing to the background of my favorite music. There's nothing else that can keep you in a high-spirited state of mind day after day endlessly, nothing. Everything fades except for you releasing energy every day to constantly renew yourself. Love can't do it. Lots of money can't do it. Trophies from the world can't do it. Everything fades except for you releasing that natural spirit inside to constantly feel great and regenerate yourself. I do it cause I want to cause that's who I am the way I was born. That's the spirit of my life coursing through my veins. The only other thing that matters is to earn a living. As you become enlightened, you should figure out how you can use one of your inspired activities to help other people in some way either to inspire them, help them with something practical or amuse them. This is the best way to earn a living, do something that inspires you any way that serves a useful function such that people will pay for it. I want to stay as pure as possible true to that individual piece of beauty and dignity in my soul rather than allow myself to get indoctrinated by anything out there. 
On any given day, when you don't release your natural, inherent energy, it sits inside of you unused. This causes minor discomfort, a weak feeling that somehow you betrayed yourself today, a mild feeling of disharmony. Multiple this by several thousand days and you have people who are very far away from the people they could have, should have been if they had followed their true natures. This causes massive misery, massive feelings of disharmony, massive feelings of self-betrayal and the clinical condition the so-called experts call depression. This is the big epidemic in our modern, high-tech society, people do not honor the natural potential they were born with and are now walking examples of generic complacency. They're everywhere. Read a person by looking at them. Do you see vitality and ease or mundanity and generic nothingness? Many millions of people have lost whatever might have been vital, inspired, beautiful, luscious and strong within them at one time when they were young and fresh. Every overweight person has betrayed themselves. You were created to be sleek and strong, to hunt and gather your food and build your own home but that's pretty well gone in the modern world. Every overweight person feels the disharmony of the unused energy within themselves stored as fat. I don't care what kind of jovial face you put on for the world. Excess weight equals disharmony and some loss of self or identity. Everybody who colors their hair is denying who they are the way they were created to be for some imaginary reason they got sucked into by hair coloring corporations who tell them it will make them more beautiful, glamorous, youthful, sexy, and worth it as the TV commercial says but what it really does is reveal to people like me that you're not in harmony with yourself because if you were, you would accept yourself as your God created you to be and not try to change your look with vain. Frivolous Gimmicks You'd know that putting gunk in your hair changes nothing about who you are in your soul. It just makes you look like another cookie-cutter fake, generic clone. Somewhere along the way most of us lose the willpower to try to live a glorious, stellar life for ourselves and let ourselves go along with the marketing forces of capitalism telling us to eat more junk food and watch more TV. If you don't believe me, just watch TV for a couple days. What a massive brainwashing machine it is. Born with a fixed essence. Vitality and beauty are gifts of nature for those who live according to its laws. Leonardo da Vinci Try to imagine who you are away from everything you've ever been brought up to believe in and have been exposed to all your life. Of course you had to learn to think by living within your particular political cultural religious system and follow it to some extent but there comes a point when you have the ability to think on your own away from the society you have been socialized in. Every one of us is born with a certain unique disposition either given to you by your God or just there from the combination of genes that mix together to form you. This essence is fixed. It never changes. From the time you have first conscious awareness about the world at around five years old, this one consciousness that is you will always be there inside of you. This is who you really are. There is a formative, maturation period where you're learning how to think to the point of logic and autonomy. This has two major aspects to it. What you learn by instinct from within yourself and what you learn by analyzing your experiences out in the world to come to your own conclusions about how life works. What you learn from the world talking at you which is the establishment heads telling you what's right and wrong including your president, the scout master, the teacher, the priest, your parents, the news anchor, the cool chick in the TV commercial, the pop star, your friends, etc. The normal stream of consciousness you live in can be divided into these two categories. The pure you. The socialized, indoctrinated you. There is the pure you which is your aesthetic spiritual essence, the engine of your life which is your consciousness as an individual, who you are in your soul then there's everything else that you let in either intentionally or by osmosis from the world. You are just like your pet. You can train him to do a bunch of stuff but at heart, he is who he is. All the training is an artificial code superimposed over his true nature which is still there inside of him and could come out if he's pushed too much to be something he's not but oftentimes the weak pets trade their true natures for a comfortable life of domestic bliss thus sacrificing the most important thing they could possibly own, who they really are in their true natures. If you, as his caretaker, restrict your pet to the point where you're denying him his true nature, 
he might fight back to assert his true identity or he might degenerate into a domestic wuss who is a poor specimen for his species. Why do pets sometimes tear up the house? Why do circus animals sometimes go on rampages? Why do millions of people get stress diseases and mental illnesses? Why do some people shoot up their workplaces and schools? Somewhere along the way they have been denied their true natures. Looking back on my life, I remember that I was interested in the same few things at 5 and 10 years old as I am now. There is no such thing as changing as I hear so many people say like they saw the great Buddha then changed or a man who used to beat his wife says he saw the light of God and now doesn't beat her. You don't change. The only thing that can happen is that you can lose your way by getting brainwashed then possibly find it again by peeling off layers of the brainwash to eventually get back to the real, pure you. There is only one real pure you. Once you know it, that's it. Life is reduced to this one simple archetype or identity that is you. Leopards don't change their spots. Your true nature is who you are the way you were born. All the psychobabble, new age voodoo, religion, money, and makeovers in the world cannot change a person's inherent nature. They can cover it up to some extent but it's always there lurking beneath the surface. Check out Anthony Bajis's novel Clockwork Orange. The point was so brilliant in its simplicity. After all the psychological therapy, prodding and analysis all these experts did on this guy who was a psychopathic madman, he acted like he was cured but it all came flooding back in one instant. He was as primal and basic as he always was. They didn't cure him. The implication was that the entire mental health industry with all its fancy-ass psychobabble is a big crock of crap because you can't change a person's soul or essence as a human being with all the stupid therapies they created and are trying to call a science of human behavior. Take a look at our modern world. We're basic people who lived agrarian, hunter-gatherer lifestyles until about a hundred years ago. Now we're dressing in suits, working in office buildings, talking on our cell phones, trying to acquire more wealth for ourselves than we know what to do with. This is the game of capitalist success in our society while I'm still the same kid I was at 5 years old and the same untamed bohemian I was at 22, trying to get a good dose of living every day by doing what I want that inspires me, interests me, and makes me feel good. You can try to acquire all the money and power you want but if you're following an artificial code imposed on you to do this, as with the game of capitalist success, as opposed to your natural code, you will be releasing energy not inherent to you while your natural energy will sit inside of you unused. Over time, this will turn you into a tired, generic dud. I know that the finite time of my life is all I own. Natural living is to love what you do because it comes from your soul. Everything else is just a minor diversion or doesn't work because it doesn't come from within you therefore to you, it's dull and uninteresting so you don't do it. I know a 74-year-old woman who has not discovered her true identity so she's always reading New Age, psychobabble type books about silly concepts thinking she's enlightening herself. I told her that quantitative knowledge does not equal wisdom. Wisdom is knowing who you are and knowing that no one out there knows anything more about your life than you so you alone are your highest authority. The fundamental concept of New Ageism, the power of intention, is a lie because there is no such thing as people sending out positive vibrations through positive intentions such that the cosmic power of the universe responds by sending you what you want in your wishes and dreams just because you asked for it and you're worth it like the hair coloring TV commercial says. The latest incarnation was the marketing hype sensation The Secret which has been the biggest new age slash psychobabble con job perpetuated on the naive masses in the past several years, pretending that if you go out with a positive attitude such that you give off certain vibrations, you will attract people to you by the law of attraction who will give you what you want. All the great people in the past lived by what they felt within themselves purely and freely like all enlightened people do not by some silly concept of positive vibrations to attract people to give them what they want. The universe is totally random. There's nothing out there that's controlling life on earth through some bullshit karma concept. On the news on any given night, some fluke will win the lottery while another fluke will be hit by a stray bullet or die in a car accident. If this power of positive intention crap was true, 
Why are there a hundred million starving artists out there? They have the greatest intentions of anybody in the world, always trying to create beauty, truth, and perfection yet nobody is giving them what they all want, recognition and money. The problem with every new age and religious inspirational book out there is that they take the passive approach to life aka wishful thinking. You either pray or send out positive vibrations then you wait for something outside of yourself to come to you and make all your dreams come true cause, of course, you're special and worth it. Enlightened free spirits don't wait for some cosmic force or God to give us something. We just do by the power we feel within ourselves. Read the one-liner master list of life section in this book and see that they're just random ideas without the engine which is your free spirit. Free spiritism is to actively create your life through who you are, what you do and who you want to be. You honor the intuitive standard you were born with every day by releasing natural energy to that end. The more you do it and the less you let outside forces enter into you, the more enlightened, pure, free and happy you will be. The world's wisdom and your wisdom as a pure, natural being. The so-called system-sanctioned wise people in the non-scientific liberal arts fields sometimes called social scientists which is an oxymoron have firstly all been programmed by some limited agenda at some school and secondly not one has been brave enough or strong enough to live their lives freely and examine themselves as a case study of one. If they did they wouldn't be a system clone pretending they know something that the regular people don't know with all that crap they learned in school masquerading as knowledge and wisdom. They'd be living their own lives for the great adventure it's supposed to be, at least for truly free, enlightened people. Contrary to the myth, the most free-thinking intellectuals within the human race are not on college campuses because formal education packages thought into separate fields and categories then limits it in light of the current cultural zeitgeist aka political correctness. The true free-thinking intellectuals are way too free and enlightened to waste time bothering with this charade. They're too busy being real with themselves trying to get the most out of their finite lives than to pretend they're wise intellectuals just because they allowed themselves to get brainwashed by the system in order to get some kind of credential proclaiming them to be an expert in some liberal arts field of life. The system academics in the humanities fields can spew off all kinds of theories but many have never been out of their comfort zones even once in their lives to try to experience life for themselves in order to feel it and learn from it yet we call them our wise people because they can regurgitate stuff from books written by other fallible people within the protocols of the particular academic field they're in. It's somebody else's version of knowledge and wisdom that somebody who has not experienced it firsthand is teaching out of a book. The formal education system has created such academic fields as psychology, philosophy, art history, and sociology which are just ideas some people created out of thin air who are no more special or divine than you or me. Even history is a load of bull because history is whitewashed crap written by the winners of the wars and the people in power, not the truth. In fact, all the soft core humanities disciplines like literature, political science, art, etc. are somebody's interpretation of what is real, cool, divine and slash or wise. A little piece of knowledge from these areas might hit a certain student and inspire him or her to become a better version of themselves but there's nothing out there in college or anywhere else except for a few new age venues where they tell you to think for yourself. Figure your own life out. If they did, Maybe they would lose revenue as people stop taking all those softball liberal arts courses that usually amount to no great insights about life as lived. The problem with college for the liberal arts is brainwash. They're brainwashing us to whatever bent the particular professor or school is into. On top of that, your thinking is reduced to one field only. You can't bring other free thoughts in from other subjects and then there's the pretense that it's science with all them stupid experiments and the whole definition of knowledge thing. Albert Bandura, professional psychologist, gets one of his college students to hit a Brutus doll while some kids watch. The college student leaves, the kids hit the bag. Bandura says this is proof that kids learn to be violent by imitating adults. What really happened is that the kids were having some transient fun which they would forget by tomorrow. Hansi Zneck, a professional psychologist, creates some test that supposedly measures how introverted or extrovert you are but he seems to forget that introversion extroversion is transitory in everyone. 
we are introverted or extrovert depending on our current mood and the situation we're in. If we're with friends, we're extrovert. If we're with strangers we're more reserved. It's manufactured knowledge that has no bearing on real life in the real world. Nobody ever talks about the natural intrinsic thirst for knowledge for its own sake. Somewhere along the way the love of learning got lost. It's all packaged into fields, courses, tests, essays, the final grade and credentials but there is no such thing as a so-called expert in any non-scientific field because everybody has their own opinion and it's just as valid as the next guys, that is, if you're being fair about it. The truly wise people are natural intellectuals who figure out their lives on their own because they know they must from an invisible force within themselves then they continue to learn because that's what they were born to do. Why don't the colleges have a mandatory course for freshmen called learning to think for yourself where they tell people the outside world of all ideas that are not scientific or physical law were all created by people just like themselves. James Joyce's novel Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man was a good story about how the character Stephen Date Ellews confronted and questioned the traditional Irish institutions he was brought up to believe in to reject them all to live by his own standard but James Joyce, the man, was a temperamental, arrogant drunk who couldn't get along with people, not even his wife. It's not like I'm gonna worship this guy and think he's got all the answers to life. The organic study of the physical brain in the field of psychology has true merit but other than that, it's just a bunch of psychobabble that has no more validity than anyone thinking about their lives even if they do those stupid so-called scientific, quantitative methods experiments that always have the same qualifiers in the results using such adjectives as could, might, tend, possibly, may which is useless knowledge because it's all either common sense or human behavior is much too erratic. For anyone to accurately predict. Any individual living their lives in the real world, analyzing their experiences to come to their own conclusions can become as enlightened as the most enlightened person who ever walked on the planet but the formal education system is trying to tell you that they have the answers within their packaged courses. They're all somebody else's ideas. They don't come close to what I intuitively feel about my life as lived day by day. When you reach that point where you trust yourself over all the institutions, talking heads and charlatans in the world, congratulations, you're enlightened. Chapter 2 The Human Soul Self-Respect, Honor Your Soul I wrote a book about how to either lose weight or stay at a moderate weight called Diet Busters and this was one of the articles I wrote for it that I thought was relevant in this book because a good to great life comes down to how much you respect yourself over and above what the world wants you to do. My self-respect is the extent to which I honor the person I want to be by releasing large amounts of natural inspired energy every day then rounding it out with my pursuit of hedonistic, sensual, and loving sensations. Because I live like this, I have a built-in standard inside of me of the person I see myself as and want to be. I see myself as an untamed wild man living in modern society as well as an artist of my life. This is my archetype, who I am in my essence as a human being. This one thing alone, my self-image of the person I was born to be, is the only thing I have ever needed to stay loose, lean and strong. I have never been on a diet, never counted calories, never paid attention to the carbohydrate, protein, and fat composition of the food I eat and I know in my soul that I'm a strong, lean and inspired middle-aged man. It's who I am. My sense of identity and self-respect would never, ever allow me to sit around as a couch potato, generic, middle-aged dud, engaging in pop culture entertainment or stuffing my face so much that I have a visible gut showing. My inner standard prevents this from ever happening. My intuition tells me all the time what I have to do next to keep honoring myself. This is what makes me and my ideology superior to the entire diet industry and all the world's collective knowledge about losing weight, being fit and living an inspired, active lifestyle. They are all mechanical, stilted, and offer one-dimensional solutions. They are all based on a trivial model of steps and stages. They all offer one-liner advice which is like putting little band-aids on the real problem which is a bleeding soul. Excess weight is just a symptom or a byproduct of a person living a brainwashed, dull, 
capitalist life not following the intuitive standard in their souls. Everybody's standard in their souls is themselves as a beautiful, noble, strong person. Just honor it or follow it. That's all you have to do. Living in modern society has made us lazy and dull. We don't do for ourselves anymore and live close to nature nor by our true natures. I chop my own firewood, I grow my own vegetable garden. I walk in the woods, I swim in the lake. I have a connection to the roots of humanity which is living close to nature and doing things for ourselves in order to survive unlike many people who live in apartments or condos and buy everything they need at the mall without doing stuff for themselves that takes physical effort and is good for the soul, to do things for yourself. Many people don't understand the beautiful, glorious, holistic being you should be, motivated by an inner force which contains a mythical image of the person you want to be. All the diet gurus out there, all the slickster weight loss companies with their lying TV commercials and even the government with its cheesy, one-liner advice about how to lose weight miss the intuitive, spiritual aspect to losing weight. You have to honor the individual you see yourself as every single day. None can compete with this image in your soul of you in your finest moment of perfection, being the essence you were created to be, some beautiful, mythical creature living a glorious life in the Garden of Eden. Follow your soul straight, strong, and true and you will become the person you want to be. The best that any diet book can ever do for you is give you a mild shot of inspiration that lasts about two days at the most because little, disjointed one-liner advice cannot compete with the engine of your life that is your soul. Just follow that. Your intuition tells you exactly what you must do in order to lose weight and become the strong, sexy, noble person you want to be. It's not hard. Follow three basic rules. Eat healthy foods. Eat less food. Do physical activities. Live the life of an artist such that you're always inspired and always doing something as opposed to sitting around watching TV or doing something frivolous on the internet. Keep that image in your mind, live for it, work at it like it is the only thing that matters, you becoming the person you were born to be. I'm constantly active because my inner standard tells me that every day I must release X amount of physical energy then X amount of creative energy for two reasons. In order to satisfy myself that I'm honoring my pure soul. In order to reach a state of consciousness that I call transcendence. You get it when you release a bunch of inspired energy from your soul. It's a combination of the serotonin endorphins my body is producing by doing these things and a kind of aesthetic spiritual sensibility about myself where I'm thinking hey, I'm taking my life for a pretty good ride today. I'm doing exactly what I was born to do. It doesn't get much better than this, to feel the power and strength in your body and release it to a good measure. This feeling alone makes you feel great and kills your appetite. You just don't think about food much when you're engaged in your life like this so you're burning energy and not eating much then several hours later when I'm relaxing, I eat anything I please and I eat it just before I go to bed. I saw some phony expert on TV, they're all phony to me, promoting his cutsy makeover diet book saying the major rule to losing weight is don't eat for at least 3 hours before you go to sleep. He doesn't give a reason why. He just says it's no good to have that food in your stomach while you sleep so I'm thinking to myself that's when I eat most of my food, just before I go to bed. For me, it's the best time because my body will be in a resting state while it's digesting not like if you eat during the day and the food is digesting while you're doing things, interfering with your abilities in whatever activities you do. Why does my cat eat in the morning just before he's ready to go to sleep for the day? He was out all night running around. He had to feel light to get around. Why do you think animals go off for a rest or a snooze after they eat? Be more like an animal than a clone who follows all that artificial knowledge the system has been shoving down your throat. I saw some study on TV where the guy fed some rats in the afternoon and some at night. He found that the rats who ate at night gained more weight because they didn't burn it off. Despite this scientific finding, I still feel intuitively that it's healthier for me to eat at night while I'm resting. My physique is not fat as a result of eating most of my food after 6 p.m. You have to do what feels right for you. Don't necessarily listen to what the heads on TV say. 
Who started this eat your breakfast myth? I'll bet it was somebody like the hate of marketing at a cereal company who wanted to sell cereal. If I'm a tiger planning to do some hunting in the morning, do you think I'm gonna eat breakfast because they tell me I need energy to break my fast since eating last night? I intuitively know I must be light and spry and to do that, I shouldn't eat anything. My intuition tells me to never eat breakfast because it would just interfere with the physical activities I do every morning. I want to feel light and free, I don't want food in my gut despite every system psychobablist out there telling me to eat breakfast. I eat at night when I can relax, enjoy the food and it can digest in peace without me running around. I know I'm right and the rest of the world is wrong. The proof is in me. I'm old but I still feel young. You might find some one-dimensional drill sergeant types following some regimen but this is all artificial. It's not like they're enjoying the journey. They are using monumental amounts of willpower to achieve their goals. I don't use willpower much. It's better and easier to follow the flow of natural inspiration within yourself. I enjoy my life. I don't get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to run 10 miles. I wake up when I do and run then. All regimented diet or exercise programs ultimately fail because they are based on sacrifice, pain, willpower, and effort. It's so much easier to just think I am this type of person so I will work towards being true to my identity. Nothing is tedious then. You do everything for all the right reasons, because it comes from your soul. I enjoy my workouts because they are a part of my identity. It's not like I'm struggling to get through in order to achieve the goal of losing weight. They are an end in themselves to release my natural inspired energy. I simply live by the natural inspiration that comes from my mythical vision of the person I see myself as. This archetype was inside of me when I was born. I know because I was doing those things as a five-year-old kid and I'm still the same. Wisdom for True Seekers Men seem more than ever prone to confuse information with knowledge and knowledge with wisdom and try to solve problems of life in terms of engineering. T.S. Elliot. If I were to wish for anything, I should not wish for wealth and power but for the passionate sense of potential, for the eye which, ever young and ardent, sees the possible. Pleasure disappoints, possibility never. Soren Kierkegaard. Life at its best is an interesting, vital passionate exploration of the rich tapestry of the human experience and the human imagination. No gods, no masters, everything you want to explore you do as the constant journey of time. Life is to be renewed day after day by soulful action, input from the world, talking to people and contemplating your life endlessly as you go along. A Book on Common Wisdom, 1988 by Fritz Capra captured the open intellectual spirit of the bohemian and exploratory times of the previous 30 or so years when people were hungrily looking for all manner of spiritual, physical, and emotional enlightenment and lived it to the hilt but in these modern times, I personally feel that as a worldwide movement, this spirit of exploration has been dampened. Everything these days seems to be packaged in a mainstream, materialistic, corporate, capitalist angle somehow. The world is indeed awash in a massive sea of one-dimensional, dull conformity. Just watch the talk shows. They all tread a limited middle ground geared for consumerism, to help make people a bunch of pacified consumers. There is very little life exploration for its own sake done on a communal level with people freely exchanging ideas and exploring their lives like the beatniks, hippies, and intellectuals of the 50s and 60s did. The E. Salen Institute in Big Sur, California was a forum for this type of searching with John C. Lilly the poster boy for this type of experimentation as far as I'm concerned but it seems to have had its heyday, its time has passed. It's now a commercial health spa as far as I know, E. Salen Institute, Big Sur, California, 9392080-667-3000, esalen.org. As it stands now, we're not free. I can't do coke in peace without worrying about the government nor can I have two or more wives if I want. Although I believe that seekers of knowledge, wisdom, and inspiration should use what's out there, 
I also believe in the ancient Greek concept of the dialectic which asserts that truth comes from people discussing things and coming to their own conclusions as a group as well as what the 60s Eastern Guru Krishnamurthy said in his book Freedom from the Known, 1969, which I now reiterate, to step away from all the conventional knowledge you've been brought up to believe in to find your own truth. Free and clear away from everything on the planet. This is the definition and embodiment of an enlightened free spirit. My job in life is to live for myself by myself in my own thoughts like everybody else but whereas most people give control of some part of themselves to something outside of themselves like another person, a family, God, capitalism, politics, the system, etc., my allegiance is to none but the spirit of life itself as lived day by day. Life should be rich in both the inner experience of your thoughts and the outer experiences of the world. Material luxury is a fine concept to aspire to but by itself, it'll leave you as empty as any unenlightened, materially poor person. The concept of Tao is like the warrior artist concept where you should go with the flow of what you feel within, not forcing anything, doing what you feel is right to expend yourself and excel in whatever it is you like to do. Don't hold back the spirit you feel within yourself. The Western view of life is a fragmentary capitalist view where everything is broken down into parts and categorized whereas the more enlightened, holistic view focuses on the mind, body, and soul as one connected to life in the universe. Hidden deep within us, according to Carl Jung, we have a collective unconscious where we share this universal cosmic energy with every other human being with our particular manifestations being our archetypes, those tendencies inside we feel that we were born with. This is the flow of life, not to go through the school system then at 18 pick from among their few hundred options of what they define as an honorable career and feel empty for the rest of your life as you go with the package deal offered by the system. Back in the beatnik days, you had Aldous Huxley with the doors of perception, 1954, Ken Wilber with the spectrum of consciousness, 1977, or Stanislaw Grof with realms of the human unconscious, 1976 and the stormy search for the self, 1991, with wife Christina Groff. By living the way I have for almost all of my adult life, I've brought my subconscious mind to the surface of my life where I'm connected to my soul all the time in daily life. Get past the daily trivialities enough to be able to live in that free headspace which houses all the deep parts of your soul. Life is the clear, simple, beautiful, multicolored visionary experience of my soul. Find your true self and use it up sharing it with other people as part of the human race. This fulfills your need to realize yourself, your need to belong somewhere and your need to earn your keep hopefully which you'll be able to do by sharing what you love to do with the world. Spiritually, life is a birth-death-rebirth concept both on a daily basis as you go up and down and in the entire scope of your human life on earth. You have to regenerate yourself every day through the release of inspired, loving and hedonistic energy. This regeneration is necessary because it's so tough to stay inspired that you have to put the process at the forefront of your life. Hopefully you use your divine spark to live the life you were meant to live then when you're about to die, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing you lived a noble life true to yourself. Prometheus Bound Aeschylus, an early Greek writer, arguably one of the first writers of drama in the world, created one of the first known stories in written history, the story Prometheus bound about a humanitarian man-god type of character whose purpose is to help mankind so he steals fire from Zeus, king of the Olympian gods to give to the human race which was said to have paved the way for the creation of the arts and give man hope in life. At that time, Zeus was a bad god disgusted with humanity who wanted to destroy it and create a new race of people. Intent on revenge against Prometheus, he had him nailed to a fissure in desolate mountains at the end of the world where he was endlessly tortured. When asked to recant and throw himself at the mercy of the gods, Prometheus wouldn't compromise. He did what he did because he felt it was the right thing to do to help humanity despite all the pain he was going through for it. Zeus was impressed by his heroism and humanitarianism so he changed into a good god on the side of humanity. 
Prometheus suffered greatly to help humanity just like Jesus did 500 years later so it has been speculated that the story of Jesus was borrowed from the Prometheus myth to create the Savior who took it upon himself to suffer for the good of humanity. Anyway, that's another story. The morale to this story is that Prometheus did what he felt was the right thing to do in his soul regardless of the painful consequences for his actions. We do because we must because it's something we feel is right from our souls regardless of possible consequences out in the world, either good or bad. The consequences could be poverty because you choose to do your own thing rather than work a regular job, criticism from the mainstream population because you're different from them and not bound by the regular things like material goods and trivial pursuits, rejection in general by small minds, jealousy by some because they can't manipulate you, discouragement because it could get tough to walk your path alone and the sacrifice of loving relationships if necessary because the most important thing in life is the unique journey that lives in your soul so at times it ain't easy but these type of people can't compromise to be anything else. They have to do what they feel they born for. To be fully human. To be a man, full human being, is to feel that one's own stone contributes to building the edifice of the world. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. All things are possible to those who believe. Mark 9:23. We're all morally ambiguous, there's no doubt about that. On the one hand, we're selfish, self-centered, hostile, aggressive and territorial yet on the other, we want to share our lives with other people, to feel love and give it back, to be nurturing and caring, to live in communities and be a part of society. I believe being human starts when you acknowledge that you're a selfish being but get beyond it by realizing that you're just one of many, not necessarily more special or superior than anyone else. You realize that you don't matter much to other people, that they really don't give a damn about you unless you can be useful to them in some way either by being a friend or helping them with something they need as relationships work in the world of real people and business. You develop a moral standard which respects others such that your rights stop where theirs start. That's the first step to break out of your self-centered shell, to realize you only matter when you're being a part of a positive force not a neutral or negative one. Morality loosely defined is self-respect and respect for others. Compassion goes one step further to be loving, kind, gentle, and to have a good heart where we sacrifice our own selfish desires on occasion to help others in need or less fortunate than us without expecting anything in return. If you're trying to be good to yourself by doing something positive for your life, it shows you respect the sanctity of life in general. If you go one step further to cast your light on others, you will reap goodness in your life by getting inspiration from it, a feeling of connectedness with other souls plus the goodwill and maybe even money from the people you help. This is wisdom, to know that you thrive when you help others thrive then they return the favor to help you thrive. The dualism of life is the choice between good and evil and selfishness versus love for others. Most people live in a gray middle area, a schizophrenic mix. Sometimes we're selfish then we get lonely and want love. Sometimes we feel loving then we get tired of our loved ones and lash out against them. I've found that inner calmness is my base. It gives me the mild temperament and the patience to stay relaxed within myself, to try to stay loving and generous to others and to keep my mouth shut and show restraint when I feel like being angry or fed up with someone such that I don't act against them. The angry feeling goes away, they don't know I had those negative thoughts, I'm still trying to be nice to them so the harmony is preserved then they do something nice for me and I realize I did the right thing by not being negative against them. It's very important to stay calm and supportive with your loved ones and humanity at large even when you don't feel like it in order to keep relations good plus the fact that the easiest thing to do in the world is to lash out and hurt a loved one because we know they will take it, they won't fight back so this is a very important lesson. Stay loving with your loved ones and be cordial to the rest of humanity even when they get on your nerves and you lose patience with them as we all invariably do by being primally selfish, self-centered beings at heart by nature the way we were born. It all comes down to attitude, you either feel that life sucks, it's cruel, you got a bum rap, etc., or you say screw it all, everybody gets hard knocks in the school of life but none of it phases you like the old song, nobody gonna slow me down, nobody gonna break my stride. 
you just keep moving on to seize every day as the beautiful experience of time known as your life. Being fully human is the ability to think rationally with the ability to go beyond it to be creative which gives us our visions, our inspiration to strive and our hopes to improve our lives for a better future. Being fully human is the freedom to choose our own lives, to hopefully strive to reach our fullest potentials, the pursuit of an internal type of dignity that comes from an inner drive to become the person we were born to be, to do what we strongly intrinsically feel within ourselves in our souls. It's the desire to do something meaningful with your life, to unleash the potential within yourself to help and inspire people in some way to live better lives, to become a better version of yourself because of something you did that mattered to somebody somehow. Beyond that, my definition of a full life goes into living out the full range of human emotions from the highest to the lowest with everything in between which I know I've done by now because I left the comfort level of my family and hometown to go out into the world alone and experienced poverty, discouragement and all that other fun stuff that struggling artist bohemians typically live through. You want love in your life, preferably all types, self-love, love of a pet and love of others. Even though I now know I'm alright as a loner, I prefer to always have somebody or some animal to love in my life. Ultimately, I believe all these things are part of the true fountain of youth, to keep moving on with inspiration through soulful pursuits, sensual experiences, and loving actions. I live my life in the moment and believe only in the physical realm in front of me but I still entertain myself by further exploring life's deepest questions as an intellectual exercise simply to stay curious in my attempts to live an interesting life, things like. Is there a God? What is the purpose of life? Where do we come from? Is there life on other planets? Is there life after death? Is there another side with ghosts, angels, and all kinds of other quacks in it? Where is this so-called other side? To be fully human is to break our dependence on our parents, religion, and societal values to create our own lives, to find our souls, take the goodness in them and return the favor our parents did in raising us by doing something good with ourselves to spread our beauty, uniqueness, and love of life back onto the world thus to live a full life is to choose good over evil and pass your particular unique torch onto others. The one-liner master list of life. According to conventional psychologists and philosophers who have attempted to define what it takes and means to be fully human, the following criteria are all necessary to get the most out of life. I got this list by perusing maybe 20 books in the self-help section at the library, number 158 on the Dewey Decimal Scale. Accept sickness, old age, and death. Accept the uncertainty of life. Accept your limitations. Autonomy. Become your own person. Be the best you can be. Character. Competence in chosen field. Create your life day by day. Empathy. Enjoy your life. Forgiveness. Fulfill your potential. Get rid of the delusion that you're the center of the universe to see yourself as a fallible human being. Have goals and dreams and stick to them. Independence. Inspired and motivated, not lazy and passive. Live by action and achievement. Live in the real world. Morality. Not dependent on parents. Persistence perseverance, never giving up because you know all you got is personal effort day after day. Physical fitness. Pursuit of happiness. Renunciation of childish, teenage fantasies of grandeur. Respect heroic effort and use it to inspire yourself. Responsibility for your life. Responsible to significant others like spouse, kids, disabled siblings, and parents. Secure sense of identity. See failure as a learning experience on the road of life. Self-awareness, self-analysis. Self-discipline. Self-pride, self-love. Sense of social responsibility. Serious about life as opposed to frivolous. Sex and love. Social ability. Spiritual identity. Strive for truth. Use your creative powers. Wisdom. Chapter 3. Ride your life like a surfer ride in a wave. Love to be alive, ride it one. 
my life is a celebration of my spirit and beauty. The great, wise hippie spirit. You were born with a pure mind and the potential to think freely. Life is for the living. Death is for the dead. Who cares after you're dead? Don't be vain enough to do stupid things in the name of power, fame, and money to try to get people to remember you after you're gone because they won't. They just don't care. Their lives are much more important to them than to waste time thinking about you, the alleged, great, famous one. Nobody reads history books except for grade school students and nobody gives a damn what a building or a road is named after. It's just a name so do yourself a favor. Focus on living now then when you die, you'll have lived a great life which is all that matters. I have no agendas out in the world. I think it's horrible. I think the human race has made a mess of it, the left-wingers and right-wingers alike, the so-called religious and the secular people and the so-called liberals and conservatives. To me, they're all the same. Not one is morally superior, morally right, or qualitatively better than the other. They're all out for themselves behind their facades. I don't believe in anything out there, not capitalism, not the ideology of material excess, not religion, not new ageism, not pop culture entertainment, not politics, not the United Nations, not even the eco-movement because for the most part, it's all a big show, the circus of life as lived in the 21st century. They don't really give a damn. At the end of the day, they all go back to their comfortable homes full of electronic gadgets and material excess while somebody a few miles away from them is still homeless and hungry. There's no hardship, no sacrifice of the comfort zone. Some celebrities even use the eco-cause as a marketing ploy to get publicity for themselves. For the ordinary folk, it's a way to meet others and socialize, especially for the over 30 crowd where social venues start to dry up. They're all looking for something like a chance to get laid, a chance to find a mate, find some friends to hang out with, get recognized as a special, high order, noble human being selflessly doing something worthy for the world. Underneath, all the ideological groups are the same, lonely, self-centered, reasonably successful people living comfortable lives with some disposable leisure time looking to connect with others for their own personal motives in the guise of caring about the future of the world. Most are well-fed, middle to upper class people looking for some minor excitement in their uneventful lives, not particularly interested in helping people. If they really did care, they would sell their homes, give the money to the poor then move to Africa to help the natives. Love to be alive write it too. I asked several people what happiness meant to them and they seemed taken aback by the question as though they had never contemplated their lives enough to try to figure it out for themselves away from cultural brainwash. I got back caricature, one-dimensional answers that sounded like they were borrowed from TV commercials, life is about having fun, provide for my family, driving my shiny new car, being with friends and family, being successful in business, etc. The guy that gave me the life is about having fun answer was a fat guy who looked like having fun to him was watching TV and eating junk food because he was overweight, pale with lots of facial hair. What can a guy like that possibly do in the way of fun to get a glorious rush out of his life? Play video games. Eat a tub of ice cream. He looked like he couldn't even jog around the block once and he was telling me it was all about having fun as though he was living large right out of a cool TV commercial. Another funny one was on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I'm riding down the street on my bike and I see a bunch of people lined up to go see a movie. How unnatural can this be, to sit in a dark theater on a beautiful day trying to get exactly what? I still don't understand what most movies or any pop culture entertainment can give you in the way of a good to great feeling. Even the greatest movie I ever saw, Papillion from 1974, a true story about an escape from a French penal colony, is still just a series of fantasy transient images that can't compete with me living my own life, expending the energy in my soul to do what I was born to do. What kind of great thrill can this stuff give you? We don't even digest what we absorb. We just move on to the next thing. I remember I was watching some great, rare, 
inspirational movie one time, I think it was Grapes of Wrath and as soon as it was over, whoever I was with, I can't remember who it was, started flicking the channels to look for the next thing while I just wanted to sit there and analyze it for a while, exactly what the story was about. I've been to concerts, magic shows, art galleries, live theater, fairs, water parks, etc. and my conclusion is that they're marketed to claim to give you some kind of special feeling but I don't get it. I never felt that special communal, Woodstock feeling of harmony at any concert, I rarely see a great artist in any realm that impresses me much or takes me away to another realm. You gotta create those special feelings within yourself and by connecting with your loved ones. To me it's like the bread and circuses of Rome before the Great Fall. When you focus on being entertained rather than actually doing something inspired, original and challenging with your life, the entire society gets soft so judging by the levels of obesity in our western, capitalist societies, I know I'm right. Are you a spectator of life or are you an artist in the pursuit of your own destiny? Where does the world end and where do you start? Do you actively try to live the life you imagine for yourself? You are nothing more or less than the kid you were at five years old and that's all that matters, that purity that is you. This is enlightenment, when your journey goes inward to the real you and you realize the world out there is one big cesspool of indoctrination that may be mildly interesting and amusing but it's not inherent to you therefore it doesn't mean much next to who you are in your soul. I must caution you that this is very tough to do because most of us are in little cliques or groups that keep us on a communal wavelength. It's a subtle sort of peer pressure and if you start to deviate and go your own way, your cohorts will try to rein you in because they don't want to lose you as an ally who reinforces who they are by being like them but if you want to live a free, glorious life, you have to be strong enough to break from the security of the pack to pursue your own whims and desires if need be. A lot of people are insecure. There's safety in numbers but if you'd rather be doing something else, you're wasting your life hanging around with these people to try to alleviate your feelings of existential loneliness. Everybody lives by an inherent misery well-being scale whether they realize it or not. Exercise the pure you and make it strong, you feel good. Neglect it, cover it over with illusions or don't know it exists and you feel miserable. Feeling good is the same thing as being inspired about your life. You don't get a good to great feeling about life from having money in the bank, living in a big house or even being loved by a great spouse and having great kids simply because you have to create your life every day. No one can create it for you. It's nice to have the money for economic security and the family for a feeling of love and community but they're the baseline. They're generic at best. You don't need much money if your needs are few and regardless of how loved you are, it's still you alone in your head answering to yourself. You have to feel good within yourself then create your own good feelings. Love to be alive, ride it 3. Your dream should always be to be who you were born to be, not some glitter you picked up from out there. It's not really a fight of you against the world unless the world brainwashes you along the way and somewhere along the line you realize this then try to rid yourself of it like a madman or woman because you feel insulted that they got you like that and realize they're all a bunch of hypocrites who can't replace their true human natures with an artificial code just like you can't. You should start to know by 5 years old who you are and what you like to do. By 18, you should have taken those activities and things you like from the world to focus on them as a part of your identity but the problem starts when you cross the line from what is your identity to take on the values and stuff the world is trying to sell you. For me, I started realizing everything was a wash at about the age of 18 when I realized that if the athletes don't give a damn about who they play for as long as they get the biggest contract, why should I as a so-called fan buy into this hyped up business venture called professional sports? They were marketing either greasy looking, unkempt guys, the hard rockers, and glam rock pretty boys at me as supposedly cool pop stars and I was thinking these aren't noble looking guys or real men the way my ancestors were, tough, sturdy, down to earth, self-sufficient, independent, free people living off the land as everybody was except for a few blue bloods back a hundred years ago or so. I feel an obligation to honor the hardships all my ancestors went through to get us into this modern world. 
I feel I must release whatever is good and true within me over and above all this indoctrinating crap they're marketing at me to try to turn me into either a metrosexual, pop culture clone wearing an earring, some kind of one-dimensional macho clown or some yuppie on a cell phone with his expensive sunglasses and his Armani suit trying to imitate some character he saw on some TV commercial somewhere about living large and in charge. Just about everybody kisses ass at some point in their lives just like I did for a while because I wanted to get ahead or be successful within the system so I played along, selling my soul, feeling miserable until I realized that material things were not the key to happiness as advanced by the American dream ideology. I have few material needs so I decided that my free time to live my life my way was way more important than chaining myself down to some yuppie career I felt nothing for so I did it. I lived freely. Of course, I could have used more money for financial security sake but I had enough to do what I wanted within reason. You can never relieve your 20s and 30s. The system is pushing most of us to get into careers and I'm thinking for what, to earn more money to buy more crap you don't need. I really enjoyed those years and now I know I'm one of the few older guys left my age who still has his vital inner spark intact. I can get it up every day x number of times and still do the stuff I did in my 20s almost 30 years ago. I kept my inner spark intact by following my true nature, releasing inspired, loving and hedonistic energy every day to honor the standard I feel in my soul of the person I was born to be. As long as you can afford health and dental care or insurance, getting old shouldn't be much different from living as though you were young except for the medical and dental needs that come with aging. You slow down physiologically but your essence as a human being doesn't change. Even when you're very far away from the idealistic, visionary young person you probably once were or aspired to be due to buying into world agendas while neglecting who you really are as an individual, your pure essence is still in there covered over by many layers of cultural brainwash. Love to be alive, ride it for. What I am can't be undone. I live happily. Line from a song. What really matters to me is how to live in a qualitatively higher state of mind than the generic mundanity of the human condition. Poor people are always worrying about money so they don't count in the quest to live a great life because they can't start to think about living for a free, inspired sensual ride until they're in a position of some economic security where they know their basic bills will be covered for at least a while no matter what happens. The greatest wisdom in the world was originally discovered by individuals contemplating their lives. All enlightened people are at that same level of thinking regardless of place or time. Despite everything you were ever taught in your life and all of society's institutions out there telling you they have some answers or wisdom in life you don't know about that they're willing to sell you or brainwash you with, the truth is that you have the potential to be as wise as the wisest person who ever walked the planet simply by trusting yourself and exploring your right of the human condition to your limits to your satisfaction away from cultural indoctrination. The individual is the lowest common denominator for human wisdom. Two or more individuals could come to higher truths among themselves as a group if they pool their gray matter but they won't necessarily discover anything higher than an individual thinking about life on his own. The highest we can go as a group in matters of wisdom is the highest an individual can go because there is one finite upper limit of enlightenment. Knowledge is a different story. We can add to the knowledge of others to build on it in educational and technical subjects but there are limits when it comes to human wisdom. There's only so much you can know to understand your life and the human condition in general which is enlightenment. After that, it's just a matter of holding on to your enlightened inner spark till death do you part because when you're enlightened, you realize you must honor who you are through inspired action from the soul because if you don't, you'll lose a hold of your vital spark which is all anybody really owns in life. Most people will lose themselves by the time they're 40. What I mean by this is that they will be very far away from the person they once wanted to be and felt they could be because they didn't honor who they really are by constantly releasing all that natural inspired energy in their essences or souls. I'm talking about that light, free feeling with a spring in your step which is way more important than anything you can get from out in the world but most people will never get enlightened enough to know this so they will pursue something from out in capitalist land, 
maybe buy into religion or patriotism than saturate themselves with frivolous material goods and pop culture entertainment but it all means nothing to enlightened people like me if you don't have that sense of constant freedom and lightness, being proud of who you are because you're always staying strong and inspired by releasing your natural, inherent energy. There are plenty of unenlightened people around who think they got it going on or have reached the elusive pillar of success if they shell out 20 grand for a kitchen makeover or if they're driving some fancy-assed car considered a status symbol by all the buttonheads in our society who buy into this kinda stuff. I saw some skinny-looking guy getting into a Porsche with racing stripes on it. I thought to myself why is he trying to attract attention to himself like that? It just puts a target on your back. All the average people without great wealth who are brainwashed by the capitalist ideology will resent this guy for flaunting it, acting arrogant and superior but he thinks he's cool and successful. If you wanna attract chicks, you're not gonna attract a noble chick if she's coming onto you because of your car. You'll attract the kind of chick looking to get money and stuff out of you. Why not just hire a hooker? You can tell when people are out of balance with themselves. It's written all over their faces and bodies. How could all these pretty cool, free, easy-going guys I knew in college degenerate into all these middle-aged duds? What could possibly be worth sacrificing your natural, inherent, vital spark for? Even religion can't solve the problem because it's an artificial code thrust over your true nature which dooms it to failure. This is why you see so-called religious people being hypocrites all the time, because they're not following their true natures in an enlightened way. Love is like life. You have to create it every day, all the time. I am enlightened enough to know that most of my life is lived alone in my head which is why I know I must constantly honor who I am if I'm to feel good about my life and comfortable in my own skin. You can't really be a great, generous, giving lover until and unless you have the sensibility about yourself that makes you a generally happy person who wants to share their lives with others. The intimate love you want might happen completely, might happen here and there or not at all but you can't control your relations with other people because of the intangible X factor which is the way they feel at any moment in time which is why you must culture your own identity away from your need for love which in some people, particularly women, has been elevated to the art of neurosis partially instilled by the massive media marketing machine brainwashing us on the desperate need for love. In order to be happy in life which is a deceptive tactic used to sell us something like beauty products, trendy clothes, cool looking cars, etc., implying that you're a nobody with no life unless you're in a deep, passionate, monogamous relationship but this is a lie. You are man or woman alone just like everybody else on the planet is man or woman alone despite what airs they might put on about being in some popular in crowd or in some dreamy love affair. The human condition is to be alone in your own head for at least 23 hours of every day. The only logical thing to do is to be comfortable in your own skin, make yourself strong, enjoy your life, don't take it too seriously and don't believe anything the system heads are trying to tell you about how to live or who to be. Love to be alive, ride at 5. The only thing that matters is to honor who you are. Deathbed Statement People want pragmatic answers in how to deal with their lives to get out of the mundane pits they're in. I know the answer. It's not foolproof because everybody gets tired and feels down. I don't believe much in the business venture of the mental health industry but the human condition is not always up. At your best you can be around 98% up and high energy during your waking hours but at some point you will feel tired for a few hours or a day or two. For me, I get injured because I'm physically active and I get sick once in a while. It's a real drag to lay around feeling helpless, in pain sometimes like right now. We're all a mild version of the disorder they call manic depression which I don't believe in as some big, serious, biochemical disease that needs permanent drug treatment and therapy because we as individuals all create our own biochemistries through what we do and don't do. In fact, if you want to get down deep in all the minutes of the day, some psychobabble guy did some study on a bunch of college students about 20 years ago where he asked them to monitor themselves every 15 minutes during their waking hours for a week. The results are what you'd expect judging from the way you, the reader, live. You know you generally go up, 
down, up down throughout every day of your life. It may not be drastic swings but there are always small swings in mood. For me, I minimize or even eliminate the things in the outside world that could cause mood swings by focusing only on my inner standard and that's it. If some guy cuts me off in traffic or I just found out I gained or lost 10 grand in the stock market, I try to minimize these events on me by focusing only on this inherent standard I was born with to constantly release that natural energy no matter what happens around me. Mental health is largely a profit-driven industry. The more people they diagnose with some mental illness, the more money they make. It's the same thing as asking a barber if you need a haircut. The answer will always be yes. From my experience, in every 30-day period, you'll have at least one day where you're tired and sluggish. That day is a good day to rest. Don't fight your nature. When your body and soul are telling you to pull into port and rest, listen to it. Some poetic types call it the harbor for your soul. I can manage to stay highly inspired almost all the time but I get tired and have days of low energy and fatigue. It seems to go hand in hand that being tired is accompanied by negative thoughts. The easiest solution for me is to have my day or two of rest and diversion into hedonism then blow off some inspired energy the next day to get back into my groove. You have to let go and constantly release all that bohemian, inspired and freeing energy that lives inside of you. If you don't release it, you'll end up another loser on the scrap heap of humanity full of stuff you got from the outside world while you let all that natural energy sit inside of you unused and drag you down with an inner empty feeling of disharmony. You can't totally control your wealth or relationships because they involve other people but you can control your life. All you have to do is know who you are then make a good to great effort to release your natural inspired energy to that end every single day and round it out by releasing some loving and some carnal slash hedonistic energy. If you don't have someone to love, make a friend by being a friend and slash or get a pet then shower it will all your pent up love. Do it every day and you'll beat everybody around in your experience and enjoyment of the human condition because the truth is that most of us are brainwashed and mundane. When the world is smiling at you giving you all kinds of awards, attention, and money, it's very easy to lose a hold of who you really are and allow yourself to be seduced by the glitter and glamour out there, whatever that is, until you're far away from the person you were born to be in your true nature. When you're going through hard times, it's very easy to stop trying and feel sorry for yourself therefore giving up any efforts to try to release whatever is inspired, good, original and beautiful within you. If you can't figure out how to stay stimulated and feeling good day after day, especially as you pass 40, you'll degenerate into another generic, passive, spectator consumer looking for something out there to give you a cozy, comfy feeling. Mightily striving to keep a hold of that primal, natural, beautiful spark is the major mark of a truly powerful, well-lived life. I put inspiration above love in my hierarchy of needs because I believe that in order to be a truly great lover you have to be a lover of yourself first and the only way to achieve that is to constantly release your natural energy such that you're always earning your self-respect and feeling good about your life. Oftentimes self-loathing people are looking for a quick fix of transient pleasure to bring them up a notch which is why the capitalist, pop culture world is thriving because it can sell us all kinds of useless, meaningless stuff all the way from junk food to manufactured pop stars to give us a momentary tingle slash thrill to try to fill up our empty lives but it never works because it lasts a few minutes then you're back to the same self-loathing, mundane you in your essence. Love to be alive, ride at 6. Take your favorite song. How often do you feel like you're freely dancing along to it or riding along with it, filling your life up with 60 seconds worth of distance run? Try this. Go out and buy a six-pack or a bottle of your favorite booze. Go home, drink half of it then sip on the rest as you put your favorite tape of music on and start dancing to it freely, unselfconsciously right there either by yourself or with your mate. That's freedom. How many people ever do that? That's inspiration, that free, light, powerful feeling of endless ease, beauty, and possibility but it never lasts. Enlightened, free, Inspired people can keep this feeling going all the time simply by constantly releasing that positive, 
inspired energy that lives inside of them. A sense of well-being and self-respect has to be constantly fed and recreated. Only enlightened people know this and live by it. Love to be alive, right at seven. Your life should be one big, grand adventure of finite time. Time is all you really own. I try to maximize mine by doing what I feel I must to feel anywhere from good to great most of the time. Just figure out a way to make enough money to do what you want and spend the rest of your time doing it not following what somebody else defines for you as happiness, success, and fun. Instead of teaching our kids to look up to others as the manufactured heroes of the day such as with our sports and pop culture stars, we should teach them to look into themselves to become the heroes of their own lives. With women, it's easy to see the major image they've been brainwashed by. Just look into any frivolous women's magazine, look at the current dolls on the market and look at our current so-called stars and celebrities. The ideal image is to be a beach blonde with cosmetic boobs and cosmetic lips hooked on diet pills, talking like a valley girl. Smoking is cool because it helps suppress your appetite and keep you thin. Next, buy as much clothes, cosmetics, nail polish, shoes, purses and jewelry as you can afford so you'll look trendy, fashionable, and glamorous, whatever that means, because as they say in the TV commercial, you're worth it. Always act as though you have a crown on your head and are walking down a red carpet or a runway modeling your clothes. With guys, the major images are being cool, macho, and slash or successful as an administrative manager of a company would be successful. There are a number of things guys try to do to be cool. Just watch the music videos to see what's currently fly for at least the younger generation. Guys wearing earrings used to be gay but nowadays it supposedly means you're cool. You're sending the message out to the world that you think you're pretty cool, you're down with the groove, left wing, up for anything including sex, drugs, and protest against the man for trashing the eco-structure of the world and giving us capitalism but underneath your fake ideals, you're a capitalist too since you're one of the biggest consumers of pop culture entertainment, up on all the latest trends and the current manufactured cool cats they call pop stars or celebrities. Most guys can't be bothered working out to try to develop a muscular, tight body so they do easier things to try to assert their self-perceptions of alpha male status aka machismo slash I'm a tough motherfucker, don't mess with me if you know what's good for ya. The car is often considered the guy's phallic symbol, an extension of his self-perceived penis power, an external expression of the silent competition among some men as to who has the biggest ding-dong therefore is supposedly the more virile and tougher. Tattoos are an easy phony way to show others you're a tough guy. So is acting like some punk gangsta in a music video with the chains, the baseball hats on backwards, the bandanas, the cowboy hats for the country crowd, the tight leather pants with a sock tucked in the underwear, the tough glare, the stance, shades, brandishing weapons and bling, anything that warns others that you're a tough, badass dude something like the catchy one-liners in so-called action movies such as Make My Day, I'll Be Back or Hasta La Vista, baby. We're brainwashed to be a bunch of tough, arrogant, superficial guys who sacrifice ourselves to full contact sports, beating each other up and killing each other in wars in order to prove our manhood to others and they say violent movies have no negative impact on our culture. Anyone, even nerds, can buy into the image of capitalist success. Just act and dress like the guys you see in Fortune and Forbes magazines, doing things like wearing a Rolex, wearing expensive sunglasses, pouting like a male model as though you're posing as an important man on the go and in demand, wearing an expensive suit with a tie or should I say noose, acting fashionably distant, smug, and superior, using big words when simple words will do, driving one of the few luxury cars synonymous with wealth, playing golf, or at least acting like you do, surrounding yourself with hired guns as your posse slash people and carrying yourself with an air of superiority as though you're more important and wealthier than everybody else. The thing about living by an image as opposed to who you really are the way you were born is that it's the outer you called your ego and it has nothing to do with the real inner you called your soul. It's all meaningless and gives you a way to enlightened people who can tell right away you're a lost soul. You are who you are when you're standing naked and alone in front of your God. 
everything else is pretense, the fake you, the image you're trying to portray to others. A free spirit becomes enlightened when he realizes he's all about soul, who he really is the way he was born. It's not about trying to impress others or creating some fake image of how cool and successful you are based on ideologies and images you got from outside of yourself. It's about honoring who your God created you to be based on the way you feel it in your essence as a human being. You don't have to do anything more than this in your life. Are there any individuals left like Columbus or Socrates might have been or are we all just a bunch of spoon-fed, pacified conformists buying into the world as presented without trying to conceive who we are away from all that stuff? Love to be alive, right at eight. I can remember as far back as 10 years old doing things to get a rush out of my life. I was trying to reach the limits of my physical strength and expend my physical energy to its fullest because it made me feel good, kinda like blowing my load of primal life essence in my pre-sexual adolescent days. I was always naturally trying to stay inspired in my mind through my creative intellectual pursuits, kinda like reaching for a mental inspired high. I craved learning new things and creating my own ideas about things. Even back then, I instinctively felt that constant mental stimulation is the key to well-being and vitality. If I got it right, I discovered I could ride my life like a surfer riding a good wave. When you expend a bunch of natural energy, that's one of the few ways to feel really good about your life provided you don't overdo it and wear yourself out. Life energy works roughly the same as sexual energy. Blow your load of both of them all the time and you're laughing at life, riding it like an artist rides his art form. I discovered the great secret of my life, ride it as though you're getting lost in the freedom of the moment. Sometimes you go hard. Other times when you're feeling tired, you slow down. Just go with the flow of whatever moves you and keep moving, releasing all that natural energy you feel inside. There are two basic levels to my life. The first level is my base temperament that gives me a strong identity because I know I'm living the right life for me and I don't care what the rest of the world says. Most of it is about two things only, release enough physical and then creative intellectual energy every single day to match my own standard of the person I feel I was born to be. After that, I want a little bit of love and some pleasure for its own sake and that's it. Nothing else really interests me much. I thought there was something out there that was going to make me happy and fulfill me so I went out looking for it. At the end of my quest, I came to the same realization everybody else does who finds enlightenment. The world out there doesn't really matter. The real battle is discovering who you are then living by it. I realized there are some good people out there, some bad people with most people living in a gray area, ruled by their immediate emotions at any given moment in time. There are no heroes and very few saints. The human organism is self-centered by design so don't expect other people to sincerely care about you or be empathetic towards you to try to feel you as some of the down ones sometimes say, I'm feeling you man. Most people are very good at socializing and pretending to care about others. This is called charm. It's our most basic trait for social survival so many of us are masters at it but they still can't get out of their heads long enough to see it from the other guy's point of view to know where they're coming from. Men generally operate on function. We help each other reach our immediate objectives in an unspoken code of equitable reciprocity. We're true to our self-centered natures. We respect each other but don't fake the love because we know we all fancy ourselves as kings in our own little world so we give each other lots of space by not getting too deep or soppy amongst ourselves. It's always about function. That way I don't have to waste my time explaining myself to other men. Women are a different story. They want to know where your head is at, what your mood is right now, today. They want that emotional connection which a lot of men don't want to give which is why relationships in general have a horrible track record. I generally don't want to explain myself because it bores me and wastes my time. That's the human condition. Accept it, play along and socialize with everybody who wants to but trust very few people and always keep one hand on your money. You can go anywhere you want looking for yourself or for something else like I did then at the end of it all you should realize you're still the same person you always were. 
your consciousness never changes or shouldn't change if you're strong enough to find enlightenment. You realize you're this one, unchanging, unitary essence that you were born as, nothing more or nothing less. Life becomes simple. Honor this essence of who you are and minimize the effects of the world's indoctrination machine on you. You hear a lot of people say religion, education, some self-help guru, some mentor, or some new age philosophy changed them. This is all self-delusion or temporary insanity because people don't change in the inherent primal foundation they were born with. You may peel off some layers of brainwash to discover the real you but once you're there, nothing will ever change you for the rest of your life. You can't find answers out there because the real issue is knowing yourself well enough to know what to do to live a great life for you, not to try to be successful according to some standards set by somebody or some institution out there. Our alleged holiest book the Bible says wisdom is the most important thing you can own somewhere in the book of Proverbs written by the wealthy hedonist, King Solomon, he had 800 wives and 700 concubines or maybe it was 700 wives and 800 concubines. As you engage in whatever intrinsic activities turn you on, you lose yourself to the process such that you're absorbed in it, doing it purely for your love of it. This is freeing the spirit within. Enlightened free spirits live to release or purge their natural free spirits every single day. This is what makes my life qualitatively higher than the generic mundanity of the normal human condition. I do only those things that inspire me, make me feel good and give me pleasure. As long as I can earn enough money to pay my way through these pursuits, I'll stay as far away from the so-called real world as I can. If you want to get some euphoric natural highs out of your life, you have to live to purge the energy in your spirit all the time. If you can do just one activity for a while every day that will take you to this temporary zone of freeing your spirit to soar on high, it will sustain whatever vital spark you might have within you for the rest of your life. Some people live for this and do it all day long like the artist painting his pictures, the guitar player strum in his guitar or me with my repertoire of physical, creative, and intellectual activities but most people don't know this is what really matters and have probably never had a truly free, transcendent experience in their whole lives so because they have no connection to their souls, they try to fill the emptiness up with all the crap from out there including the pursuit of money and career success which is meaningless if it doesn't fill an intrinsic need within you. The problem is always one of soul and the only way to fill it is to release the natural, inspired energy that comes from there to the point where you're happy with yourself. The release of endorphins along with the spiritual aesthetic feeling you get combined to temporarily put you in a higher state of mind than normal consciousness then you stay in a good mood for the rest of the day provided you don't allow yourself to get polluted by all the negative stuff out there in the likes of downer people, the media, and pop culture entertainment. That's where my search for enlightenment has taken me. The release of my natural inspiration is not my whole life. I'm a lover and a hedonist too. I seek pleasure and transcendent experiences in other ways but at least 75-80% to 80 of every day in my life is dedicated to the release of my natural, inspired energy. Chapter 4 Random Musings I write because I have to release my energy. A noble great spiritual aesthetic life is a life where you feel full of infinite possibilities and live it out. It's hard to stay inspired all the time. You have to discover your true nature then make a pact with yourself that your life will be nothing more than honoring who you were born to be by nature by releasing that inspired aesthetic spirit to you will loving energy every day with gusto and passion for the process but there will be tragedies and hard times. People and pets you love will die. Some will get sick. You will get sick or injured. There might be other hardships like money problems, relationship problems, having a child with a disability, having a child rebel against you, etc. I've gone through some of these trials where I felt like I was dead man walking. Despite how strong, vital, and inspired I was for many years, I felt like all of it meant nothing because all you ever have is one moment in time, right now. All the great energy you might have had in the past doesn't mean anything anymore. I lived a fun, easy life until some tragedies hit then I felt shell-shocked like all of a sudden I realized that life is hard for a lot of people. Millions of people have disabilities, problems, or they're just old, 
tired, worn out and limited in scope. I eventually had to realize this is my life. I have to keep moving, trying to create joy, a sense of peace and righteousness otherwise I would feel like death with a deep emptiness inside of me. If you can do something to help others or show gratitude for them being kind to you when you're down, that's good. You can fill the emptiness by being a light to people who need you more than you need your self-pity. The human race exists on a continuum between good and evil. You have to believe that the good side will win out and we will live in a better world. I created the idea of true democracy because I believe we have to get rid of elected politicians to make decisions ourselves over the internet. I think politicians and the elitist shadow governments run our societies and squander the money that can be used to help people live better lives. A great, noble spirit has to get over everything because in the end it's all you got, just your pact with God to honor the spirit he created you to be. You must keep moving with it with love for yourself and love for humanity. If you don't, you become a wreck of humanity and it's your fault for withering away, sitting around wasting your life eating junk, watching useless stuff on TV among the other meaningless pursuits which is how most lost souls end up living empty lives. There has to be something you do out of love for life. It doesn't matter what it is. You must release your natural energy with the sense that you're honoring your creator in a way that you are making him proud of you through what you do day after day. If you don't live like this, your life is really nowhere regardless of what illusions and delusions you live under like all them frivolous hotshots I see around, thinking they're trendy and cool. It doesn't matter. Your only accountability is to your soul, the divine spirit your God endowed you with. Live by it and you're fine. Don't live by it, your life is a mess. I know a guy who won several million dollars in a lottery. His life is nowhere. He sleeps half the day, he's about 25 pounds overweight, he drinks a lot of alcohol and he has no drive except to go fishing. I don't say anything about what I think. I know him because we've been superficial friends since we were kids. He never entertains a thought of doing something with passion or intensity. That's why he's a lost soul. His money will never give him a strong, solid, inner feeling. Lots of young people have the arrogance of youth thinking they are powerful and unstoppable but see them at middle age. That's the real test. What do you do when you're not the cock of the walk anymore? How do beautiful women live when men don't look at them anymore with a sense of attraction? How do men live when they know they ain't the toughest guy in the room anymore? Be the kindest and the wisest. I have a lot of energy. I can't stay still. If I do. I start to feel like I'm withering away. I don't want to repeat myself writing the same thing over and over. I wrote this stuff out over the years whenever I felt inspired. I felt I should put it out there because it can have some positive value to someone. The only rule of life is to release most of the natural energy anyone feels inside of themselves with love for the process doing some hedonistic things but also doing things to help others and the planet in some way. This is how you get to feel good, by doing things that connect you with the God-given power inside of you and with life around you, mainly people and pets but also by connecting with being alive itself like when I'm out in nature I get those good feelings that I'm thankful for being here reasonably healthy, free, living a pretty good life. I used to be young, strong, and vital but now as I age, I realize I'm just an ordinary mortal guy with a deteriorating body. Everybody has a sense of existential loneliness that nobody wants to talk about. Why is Citizen Kane still considered the greatest movie of all time? It's because the kid who became a big shot tycoon wants only one thing, to desperately feel that unconditional pure motherly love that he had as a kid. I believe this craving for love is inside all of us. We bury it away. We grow up. Our mothers get sick and die. Some of us find a great soulmate. Most of us don't. We find an average love but I talk about that in my love book, not here. I write to release my love of life. I hate the tragedies but I see them every day. I know that 30,000 kids die every day according to UNICEF. If I was king of the world, I would do the righteous things to solve all these problems. 
something is wrong because we have the wealth to help everyone live at a modest standard of living but some people starve while others have big yachts. Everybody has cynical moments and dark nights of the soul. At the end, you realize you have only two choices, keep trying to be a part of life or wither away. That's why all anyone owns is spirit. You either accept the spirit God gave you and pledge to do something good with it continuously until you die or you got nothing really. Everybody stands alone. At any moment, can you be inspired, keep going strong? Is there a nobility inside of you that makes you worthy of your creator? You intuitively know. Dying is a part of living. Death is painful. Accept aging AMD death among your intimates and face it bravely when it happens to you. Nobody can say for sure whether there is an afterlife but I'll still be noble about this life. I won't feel sorry for myself when I age. I'll accept it and do the best with whatever I have. That's all anyone can do. Everyone will die. If you die of old age, you beat the odds. Many people don't make it that far. Wisdom one-liners one. Live without discipline, die without dignity. Aristotle said work that you're paid for absorbs you to the extent that it degrades the mind and destroys your life. Mark Twain said work is a necessary evil. When you help others, you help yourself. Be who you are by nature. Arthur Schopenhauer, 18th century philosopher, said man is the only creature that wonders at his own existence and ultimately concluded that there's no real meaning in life except for what meaning you give it. They say that the highest good is freedom. And if freedom is goodness, then how can a free person be unhappy? If you see a person who is not happy, you should know that he is not a free man, he is a slave of something. In order to be completely free, you should be ready to give to God all those things which you have received from him. You should be ready to unite your will with that of God. Epictetus Don't aim at success, the more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you are going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued, it must ensue, as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a course greater than oneself. Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning People with great and wonderful souls are always quiet and happy. People who do not have spirituality are always unhappy. Chinese Wisdom It is very dangerous to go into eternity with possibilities which one has oneself prevented from becoming realities. A possibility is a hint from God. One must follow it. Soren Kierkegaard The problem of restoring original and eternal beauty to the world is solved by the redemption of the soul. The reason why the world lacks unity and lies broken and in heaps, is because man is disunited with himself. Ralph Waldo Emerson As a man thinks within himself so he is. Proverbs 23,7 Be not controlled by the world but be transformed by the power of your mind. Romans 12,2 John Milton, the English poet, wrote in Paradise Lost, The mind is its own place, in it, you can create a heaven or a hell. That's it right there. An enlightened life comes down to a constant process of exploring, growing, and enjoying yourself, seeking out transcendent adventures and experiences. Enlightenment is living without delusion, seeing the picture crystal clear, busting loose from your little self-centered fantasy world to see yourself as others see you the way you really are in the world and learn from this little mental experiment to better yourself. Step back for a minute from your hasty judgments to see the people around you as they really are, not cool, tough, arrogant, self-centered people but normal fallible human beings with insecurities and fears just like you trying to get through life day by day. If you're friendly before being snobbish or mean, you will find that life goes a lot smoother and you make a lot more allies if not friends. Everybody around you has got some manner of a sad tale or problem they're working on. Don't judge people on first sight by their exteriors. Often they're just covers for insecurity and fear. You reap what you sow, you get what you deserve. It generally works like this in life. Everybody eventually gets what they deserve in the way of peace and friendship. Take an easy attitude with life. Don't go around with a tough expression on your face. 
try to smile and look friendly. Most people around you aren't bad people, they're just wrapped up in their own little worlds. If you think people are hostile, you will get hostility back. If you assume they're friendly and act that way, you will make friends if you initiate and give them a chance. Think of life as a journey and not necessarily a goal because goals come and go and you're still stuck in your mind. Regardless of what may happen to you in life, the worst tragedy or the greatest triumph, when all the smoke clears, it's still just you alone with your soul and you have a choice every day to either honor it and get happiness out of the deal or ignore it and ultimately feel miserable. You need inner peace along with a constant purging of your inspired energy. Go with the highs when they're happening and live the lows too because they make you a complete and better person in the long run. It's savoring life in all its diversity. Enlightenment will not change your daily responsibilities to take care of yourself or your family. It will just make you that much more peaceful and joyful doing them. It's pretty easy to find your soul but the true test is to live it honorably day after day after day. A great life is simply to have the courage to totally be yourself day after day even when all the crap of the world forces most of us to bend, possibly break, and sing sad songs occasionally. Buddhist, altruistic types who claim to give up ego totally and live for the good of the world always fail because every last one of us has a self-preservation, selfish gene which is totally alright to live for because it's your true nature, Nobody else is gonna live for you and you can't be a torch to others until you first love yourself and do something worthy with it. At its lowest common denominator level, life is just material survival and this comes down to a basic comfort level of a predictable routine and a material headspace which leads to a counting game of how much you're up or down financially and worry about future outcomes which waste a good many brain cells and kill a good many people due to stress. No material things will ever change your headspace all that much. Beyond basic needs, the surroundings really don't matter all that much. You're always stuck in your head regardless of the changing kaleidoscope around you. It's called stream of consciousness, free flow of thoughts, potential, theater of the mind and it's all you really got and all you're ever gonna get out of this life. Anybody can have a momentary flash of greatness and win a gold medal or do something incredible but the true test is to be true to yourself day after day with the mundanity of time and the indifference of all the indifferent souls around you. Mastery of anything requires constant vigilance. I've seen plenty of virtuosos, particularly in the athletic realm, fall by the wayside after as little as one week of inertia. The lesson is constant vigilance to your craft day after day after day. If you're a master and slack off, ultimately you start to lose yourself and feel miserable. We create our own biochemistry either through action or moping. Your mind can keep you well or make you miserable regardless of the circumstances that are surrounding you. All battles are won or lost in your mind. If you have health and natural inspired energy, you have almost everything. In your own town where you live, there are homeless, hungry, and poor people and many more dejected and rejected about life. The world is a cesspool full of many, lost broken souls with absolutely no direction and no will as to how to proceed in life. Be thankful if you're inspired. If you ever want a lesson in humility, just go to jail for a few days. And think of all those people with disabilities and medical conditions. You really ain't got no problems. A disciplined mind sets the winner apart from everybody else. Activity breeds activity, inspiration breeds more inspiration, desperation breeds more desperation, nothingness breeds more nothingness. You are what you eat. You are what you think. Don't be a slave to your emotions. Be a rock, make all decisions on logic. Your mind is the engine that determines everything that happens to you that's within your control. Be your own cheerleader, be positive. If it makes you feel strong, invigorated and proud of yourself, that's the pure you. Everybody has an inherent standard they were born with that they should or must follow if they're to drink from the cup of the full, free-spirited life. We are brainwashed to follow the standards of success and happiness from the outside world rather than following who we really are in our true natures. Align your true nature with your means to earn a living and you win the game of life.
Monogamy is cultural brainwash because most of us automatically assume this is the key to happiness without exploring who we really are away from the system's conventions and trying other things. Power is having the guts to step outside of the box enough to pursue who you really are the way you were born with all the originality, beauty, grace, aesthetics, freedom and inspiration you have buried somewhere inside of you. We are primal beings ruled by our hormones to a large extent. The question is how much are you willing to explore it and live by it day by day versus how much do you repress it in order to be a safe, productive citizen the way your society wants you to be? All you own is that inner feeling that is you. Most of us are self-centered, selfish people who live in our own little worlds in our own little comfort zones despite any illusions we might have about being kind, loving, idealistic people trying to save the world. If we were as good as we like to think we are, we would have solved all the world's problems by now. Look into the mirror of your soul. Who is the real you away from everything you've ever been brought up to believe in? Run with a bohemian-inspired aesthetic mix, always savoring in the sensations of the moment, living for the transient experiences that make up your life. Idle hands lead to uninspiration, misery, addictions and trouble. Every day is an unpainted canvas that I try to paint with some manner of gusto and intensity. Inspiration is the engine of the soul followed by an appreciation for one's life with reverence as a divine gift from the gods. Figure out how to stay inspired day after day. For the truly free and enlightened, life is a great adventure not some timid, packaged, spoon-fed experience. Is your life enough fun for you such that there's almost nothing else you'd rather be doing or are you one of those people always looking for something outside of yourself to fill you up, entertain you and occupy your time? Follow who you really are away from the brainwash of the world. Life for enlightened, free people is a constant release of their natural spirits. Everything else is dull or meaningless. A free spirit lives by his or her spirit. They do what they feel from within as purely as possible. Wisdom one-liners too. An enlightened life is one of contemplation and action. You can't love others greatly unless you've got a good sense of inner harmony first. This is one of the great illusions of the Western world. Seek out romantic love to fulfill the emptiness within even if you don't have any real semblance of inspired wisdom and a stable identity within you. Other people won't make you happy until you can make yourself happy by discovering your true identity and living by it so until then, think twice about making a legal contract to live exclusively with one other person for the rest of your life. All anyone ever really owns in life is their inner spark. Fear and laziness are big impediments to a successful life. Don't expect favors or breaks from anyone. Nobody owes you anything nor will they give you anything. Don't demean yourself by asking for handouts. Your only value in the world is whatever use you are to others and that's it. That's the hard, cold reality. People don't care about how special you think you are. Mind your own business. Don't be a busybody. Don't gossip. Don't bother much with other people's affairs and that includes the tabloid shows on TV. You will sometimes think that life sucks. Just keep the big picture in mind. Don't ever get down on yourself, easier said than done. Get a good night's sleep. Deal with your problems and keep moving forward. No matter what calamities befall you, forget about them as fast as you can. Snap out of it and keep going. Be ready for failures, changes and new beginnings all the time. You must see them as learning experiences. All your thoughts are information and energy. When you think, you set up a chain reaction by creating similar thoughts to the thoughts you're thinking. All thoughts are reduced to physiological reactions in the body. Your nervous system slash immune system reacts to how you think. It is self-conscious therefore your best bet is to have a natural, relaxed, positive flow of thoughts going through your brain. You can live a free life but you have to do it within the system to some extent. Figure out a way earn your money through your efforts rather than simply fighting the system just because you hate it. You are your memories. They're all right if they're positive. It's good to reminisce to help out with the positive flow but if you have a negative past, 
try to forget it as much as possible to focus on the beauty in your soul. Don't make mountains out of molehills. Rome wasn't built in a day. The toughest among us still let little things get to us. Succeed in the world by working on your goals a little bit every day. The best way to be happy is to follow the natural inspired energy in your soul. Be sure and steady but know when to quit. Pace yourself. Don't expect to achieve your goals overnight. Enlightenment is not in personal elevation but in the ability to reach out, to offer compassion to a lost desperate world and raise others' awareness. Siddhartha Buddha. The truth shall set you free. John 8:32. I exist as I am, that is enough. Whether I find myself today or in 10,000 years doesn't matter. I'm happy with who I am. The one who dies with the most spiritual consciousness aka wisdom wins. Everything in the world is transient so don't be too attached to anything, even other people. Enlightenment is the ability to take part in the action of the world but be detached from the outcome. Life was meant to be lived as a right of experience not managed. You can purge your energy any way you want, the important thing is to constantly get it out to free yourself from mundanity and release it from your system through the experience of doing those tough, worthy, interesting things that expend you and make you feel like you're doing what you were created to do with all the intensity of a thoroughbred racehorse. The rule for general well-being is to use up this energy. Most of the emptiness any human being feels is the emptiness of not living by his or her true nature. Some emptiness is the result of not having the intimate soulmate, kindred spirit love you want from a lover and the rest of humanity in general. I'm happy with myself. I don't want to try to change myself to become a successful clone as defined by the world system. Tesla 2, Web Character Inspiration plus living by your inner standard equals self-respect plus freedom. I have loved my fellow man. And lived to learn that they are neither fellow nor men. But machine robots. D.H. Lawrence. To have this path made clear for him is the aspiration of every human being in our beclouded and tempestuous existence. Joseph Conrad. I feel sorry for the human race because it's a big tragedy. Most of us don't do what we really want in life. Some of us get brainwashed into doing things we don't particularly want to do for the money and status. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat nor about your body, what you shall put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Luke 12 22-24 Read the book of your own life. Rumi. Gotta feel right about what I do. Without a natural inspiration for your own life, it's not possible to be a great lover in the romantic sense to share your life with someone else for the glorious, aesthetic experience it could be at its highest level. Listen to your heart. It will tell you everything you need to know. Watch your pets. Be more like them. They listen to their inner voices rather than listening to all the clutter in the outside world. If you're a life seeker in any way at all, Sooner or later you should come to enlightenment which is to realize who you are in your essence and to know the only game is to figure out how to stay inspired and feeling good to great about your life day after day forever. The western world is currently in the midst of an overkill of phony psychobabble and self-help knowledge that has brainwashed the average person to think that some people and institutions out there are doing advanced thinking, analysis and research in order to find new cutting-edge strategies, as they like to call them, techniques, etc. to deal with life and master it but it's all bullshit, every last bit of it. Human life is very simple for enlightened people. Listen to yourself. Don't get taken in by the brainwash of the world. You're wise enough to know you have to earn a living out in the world but you're also wise enough to know that you will do something that matches as closely to what's in your soul as possible. This daily purging process of natural energy is instrumental to human happiness, not much different from a dog's happiness. Let a dog run the fields and herd sheep and he's happy because he's releasing the natural energy he was born with. Lock him up in a house all day, feed him junk food and he will be sad because he's not fulfilling his purpose in life, releasing his natural potential energy. 
most people don't know why they feel mundane, generic, average, or miserable all the time even if they are successful according to society's standards. It's because they're releasing energy other than natural potential energy which does nothing to contribute to an inspired state of being. A lot of people don't understand what is meant by identity. They think it's something from the outside world as opposed to something inherent within your spirit. Your identity is not your job title, your marital status or your material possessions. It's who you are. Most people lose the true souls and the true natures they were born with by default because they grow up being molded by the system to such an extent that when they reach adulthood they think a great life would be to work some white-collar job somewhere five days a week, eight hours a day, earn enough money to drive a sports car and buy a bunch of crap they don't really need. I have to applaud the system for doing a great job indoctrinating people while giving them the illusion that they are living free lives. It's a masterful con job and just about everybody falls for it. Whatever your identity is is fine as long as you don't impose it on other people. Everything about the individual human condition that has any worth in all of human history, poetry, and literature is all about one thing only, one individual search for his or her own brand of truth in life, not about accepting the system's brand of truth that most of us are indoctrinated by. It's about the few in the massive sea of humanity who actually give enough of a damn about their right of the human condition and have guts enough to try to get beyond everything they were conditioned by to come to their own truth which they perceive as a higher truth because it's original, totally from within themselves. At some point, you will stand alone, stuck in your head. You are given an essence at conception. If there's a God, this is the most divine thing he gives you. When you're young, your parents teach you the basic rules of conduct in society and teachers at school teach you academic subjects. I will grant this formative period of youth as a period of immaturity where you're led by others but you will reach a point, for me it was at five years old, that I sensed my essence as an individual, and from there on in, if you're enlightened, life is reduced to you and this essence. For enlightened people, the path to enlightenment is to discover this essence much like a mustard tree manifests itself from a small seed. There are no teachers or defining moments as some of the psychobabblists like to say. For me, it was always about this essence that I first discovered at about 5 then got brainwashed by the world until about 25 but even through that period, my inner voice was telling me that the stuff about going to college to be manufactured as a system clone for a paycheck was wrong and I finally got the guts to be true to myself and went back to this essence which is all that life is. I had no great revealing moments in my life nor any great wise mentors along the way. It was all inside of me all along. I just had to bring it out. In my naive idealistic state as a curious young man which all young people should be if they've got any guts to question their lives and the societies they live in, I sought out intellectuals who thought like I did, Richard Bach, James Joyce, Frederick Niesisch, Ayn Rand, D.H. Lawrence, but after this excessive intellectualism of youth, I didn't need them anymore. They simply reinforced what I felt inside anyway. It's just about an individual knowing that when he or she reaches a state of enlightenment, he has found his consciousness, the way he constantly thinks and feels, which will stay the same throughout his life provided he doesn't let it wither away through human weakness. Wisdom One-Liners 3 Your essence is the pursuit of the truth, beauty, perfection, and joy of life through two seemingly mutually exclusive opposing paths. 1. The fulfillment of self-centered, hedonistic, carnal, intoxicating, euphoric, egocentric desires. 2. Seeking love, to help and connect with others. To dishonor this would be a betrayal of the essence that is me and it would lead to a wretched life of self-loathing because I have not become the person I could have been if I had the guts and the fortitude to go through with it. Some of us have strikes against us right at birth. If you're born into a poor family or a poor country, your life opportunities are severely limited right off the bat by your socioeconomic status but a worse tragedy than this is people born with silver or even copper spoons in their mouths who don't do anything with this great opportunity to run with their lives without worrying about money. There should be something inside each of us that's natural, noble, inspiring, visionary, psychedelic and leads to a euphoric sense of transcendence when you do it. 
artists of life live to free themselves from the generic mundanity of the human condition through what they do. If you ain't tapped into creating transcendent experiences for yourself through what you do, to my way of thinking, you ain't got nothing despite all the money, status, delusions, and power you might have out there. I am the supreme material minimalist. The less stuff I own, the better I feel because then I don't have to waste my time dealing with it. The key to a great life is to ride it as opposed to manage it. The psychobabblists otherwise called the mental health and self-help industries don't want to tell you that you have more intuitive wisdom within you than all the liberal arts knowledge in the world because if they did they would be out of a job since all enlightened, free people know they are as wise as any human being can possibly be, that all answers to life are contained within themselves. Enlightenment is to know that if you make an attempt to take your right of the human condition as far as you can go, nobody on the planet now or ever can be superior to you. The best they can do is equal you because there is a finite limit to enlightenment and all enlightened people are at that level. Nobody can go higher than that. Some ideologies that snare people in are patriotism, nationalism, ethnicity, religion, and new ageism which are all false and artificial since we are all one human race on one planet with artificial borders called countries and nobody knows for sure whether there is a god or not. Corporate marketers know all about the emptiness, detachment, and loneliness much of our citizens feel because most of us are detached from our true natures and our society. Gone are the self-sufficiency lifestyles of the old days where you knew the people in your neck of the woods because you were all dependent on each other for friendship, help, moral support and survival. Nowadays, we have big cities full of apartment buildings and cookie-cutter houses in the suburbs. Most of us work jobs where we don't see tangible results such as building your house with your own two hands, gardening for food or milking a cow to feed ourselves so we have to fill up the void somehow and that's where capitalism and pop culture entertainment come in, giving us pseudo-happiness as with all the crap at the mall that you don't need and pseudo-intimacy as with the characters on TV. We are detached from our relationship with nature from whence we came and from our own true natures as individuals which have been covered over by the education, indoctrination, and advertising from the world. The result is that we have societies of lost souls detached from whatever is original, natural, and inspired within themselves as individuals the way they were born. The TV networks geared for youth are so good that they define and market youth rebellion their way then the naive youth imitate it thinking they're being cool and rebellious but they're just being brainwashed by the marketing heads in corporate backrooms whose sole motivation is to sell them stuff and get them hooked on the consumerist pop culture entertainment lifestyle to give them some kind of safe, comfortable, warm, fuzzy feeling inside of belonging to the greater tribe when the truth is that if you were really enlightened and free, you'd see past it all and live for what's pure and good about you as an individual. Enlightenment is to be at peace with who you are and not be swayed by other people trying to manipulate you to somehow conform to the way they want you to be. Don't break any laws, pay my own way and the rest of my life is mine. You don't have to listen to anybody, any protocols or any system including your government. Just follow its rules without bowing down to them. Wisdom One-Liners 4 Think of yourself as an ocean. The surface is always dealing with the outside environment, reacting to it, sometimes with high, stormy waves but down below, it should always be the same feeling which is the pure you, your everyday consciousness which comes from that one essence that is your soul. It should never, ever change. You are that person the way you were born and that's it. You get enlightened when you discover it then live by it, never flinching, never bending to anything the outside world throws at you. I can stay inspired by releasing my natural energy all the time which constantly regenerates me. You as an individual should be original, strong, and interesting. You can start on your path to enlightenment by spending less time filling your head up with pop culture entertainment and spending more time focusing on who you are as an individual and what exactly you want out of your life. Separate yourself from what your society defines as success and happiness for you to discover what you're really all about away from that stuff. Ayn Rand's character PJ. O'Rourke in the novel The Fountainhead is a strong-minded individual wise enough to pursue his own course in life in the face of the massive forces of society trying to turn him into a clone. 
Virtually all great leaps forward in humanity were created by individuals with obsessive needs to release the natural energy within themselves. You don't generally do great things by being a part of some committee in some organization. You hatch great ideas in some room somewhere by yourself then pursue them with a fury simply because you believe in them because you know you must because this is what you were born to do. Every morning when I wake up, I know it's me alone that must create my sense of happiness and well-being therefore earn my self-respect for the day. I do this by constantly releasing those three types of energy, inspired, loving and aesthetic sensual carnal. The system brainwashes you with this idea that there is some kind of unified community out there. There isn't. We're all a bunch of loners walking around each living in a fantasy world of our own creation. Your job as a good citizen clone is to try to achieve recognition and status in it, as if that's gonna do something to help you live a glorious, transcendent life. Sure, we all unite here and there for a cause or to socialize but anybody that tries to pretend that there are more than three people anywhere who get along for more than a few hours in a perfect unified community without disagreement and dissent is a fool and a liar for believing that human beings can be together and live together for long periods of time without ego, jealousy, vanity, arrogance, pettiness, and selfishness getting in the way. People can't get along together in a close, intimate way for a long period of time because of the human personality in general. Everybody has their own ego and their own self-centered way of doing things and thinking about them. Among people of the same gender, there's usually a silent competition. Among opposite sex people, there's the battle of the sexes. Among lovers and soulmates, there's always the line between you as an individual and the dynamics of the relationship. This is why I give anyone I happen to be involved with either as a friend, business associate, or lover lots of space to live their own lives, because I know how inherently self-centered and territorial we all are. I know about human nature by now because I studied myself and realized that what I think and feel is pretty typical although almost no one admits to their self-centered, territorial ways out loud. Familiarity breeds contempt. The greatest way to keep marriages strong is to stay out of each other's way for at least 70% of every day. If you're tuned into what's going on, you will realize that most people are spending their time thinking about the most important thing to them which is themselves. They're not thinking about you much so why should you waste time trying to impress them with how cool, fascinating, and beautiful you are when they don't really care and if you're one of those lost souls playing this game because you think it's the way successful people are or you think that it will elevate your inner thoughts about yourself then you're wasting your life on this life from the system, thinking that recognition from others is a high ideal and will influence the way you feel about yourself and the way you live day by day because it doesn't. Some people are that empty as individuals that they look to others outside of themselves to fill them up somehow, to give them some sense of a positive feeling about themselves but enlightened people know this is all transient and doesn't sustain an individual where it counts. Wisdom One-Liners 5 There is a time in every man's education when he arrives at the conviction that envy is ignorance, that imitation is suicide, that he must take himself for better or worse as his portion. It is the harder because you will always find those who think they know what is your duty better than you know it. It is easy in the world to live after the world's opinion, it is easy in solitude to live after our own, but the great man is he who in the midst of the crowd keeps with perfect sweetness the independence of solitude. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Self-Reliance Put loosely, there are three major facets of happiness. Whatever it takes to keep you inspired, Soulful pursuits. The search for pleasure, hedonistic pursuits. A few close relationships to share the warmth of the intimate experience, emotional connections, help each other and feel like you're connected to other living entities here and there as opposed to being a total solitary being stuck in your head. We can feel others and even though some of them might feel for us, most will never know who you really are just like you'll never know what anyone else is really thinking even if you're in a great loving relationship with them. I want to reach out and be close but everybody keeps their distance to a point too. I want to uncover whatever is mystical and beautiful in me and live it out. My destiny is to try to connect with the God force inside of me, to be that strong spark given to me at birth. Seize the days. Cherish your life. 
it is short. Before you know it, you'll be facing old age. Walt Disney said, first find something you like to do so much you'd gladly do it for nothing, then learn to do it so well people are happy to pay you for it. In Eugene Onal's play The Iceman Cometh, the setting is the local bar where O'Neill goes through a dozen characters each with some illusion, pipe dream, or delusion about their lives covering all areas like wealth, status, politics, glamour, picture-perfect family, romance, delusions of grandeur, business success, religion, status, etc. The character used to help strip everybody down of their illusions is Theodore Hickey, the fast-talking salesman who comes in and confronts everybody about their pipe dreams and delusions but the irony is that he's a madman who killed his wife convinced that he did it because he loved her but really hated her so the redemption at the end was that he's a madman therefore everything he says is null and void. This means they can all go back to their individual dreams and fantasies so there is a collective sigh of relief as everything goes back to normal. The point is that we all need illusions to go on and survive. This is my take on life, kinda like some quote I read by Sir Francis Bacon that goes something like, everybody lives in a world of their own creation known to none but them. You can't bend people to your will. Everybody has got their own fantasy. You can just love them and hope they love you back. We all need a vision of fantasy, paradise, or a better life to sustain our souls because if we lose this and accept reality for what it is, Many of us may get depressed because of the circumstances we see ourselves in. You have to create your life every day. Part of it is creating a fantasy. Part of it is releasing the natural energy in your soul with inspired action to feel like you're in motion with your life to this imaginary utopia in your mind and that's the way it goes. You create this feeling of possibility within yourself every day and that's as good as it can get because there is no fixed place you get to in life where all is perfect. There's no place over the rainbow where everything will be perfect every day simply because people disagree, get into fights, most people think they need more money and stuff and everybody's body breaks down sooner or later. Everybody loses their youthful spark of inspiration at some point in life. The trick is to keep getting it back. If you knew how little time most people spend thinking about others because they're thinking about themselves, you wouldn't care about your so-called image anymore. Even people who love each other passionately can't monitor the inner states and well-being of each other minute by minute, day by day and they don't because they got their own lives to concern themselves with. Enlightenment is to see the world as it is, a bunch of fallible loners with public faces trying to act like they're connected to some illusory in crowd somewhere when every last one of us knows, in the privacy of our minds, that we're a loner self-centered to boot and we wouldn't want to share our innermost thoughts with anyone else anyway because there's a lot of carnal, evil, vile, ugly stuff in there but we never let it show which is good in order to be functional in society. Get over the pretense of the grass is greener syndrome or some illusory in crowd somewhere. We're all at the same level, a bunch of loners stuck inside our heads despite the outer appearances we put forth. There are generally two versions of what constitutes a glorious life. 1. The pop culture, glamorous lifestyle of working hard in the traditional American dream sense to achieve what they call the champagne wishes and caviar dreams of material success and status constantly bombarded at us through the media. 2. The Nietzschean version which is to do tough, challenging things for your own sense of self-respect and nobility. Wisdom One-Liners 6 Burn your natural energy with love for the process. Try to imitate a cat. He's always following his true nature. My cat is always purring. It doesn't matter what's going on out there, the biggest storms, all that crap on the news, the local gossip. He's always got the happy purr going on inside unfaced by the world out there. He's happy within himself. People buy into all this morose, phony, negative system knowledge that alienates them from who they really are and it's constantly blasted at us through the media all the time. Some psychobablist says we're all victims of our past baggage and some other one says we're all victims of fear. All the while, they're pounding us with what they call the news which is overwhelmingly negative then they pound us with unrealistic visions of a frivolous, meaningless life somewhere in some fantasy place called Hollywood which doesn't exist in the real world. 
The town of Hollywood in Los Angeles with the zip code 90,028 is just another concrete jungle full of ordinary, working people living average lives. Everything except for scientific law was created by people so nobody or no institution can go qualitatively higher than any one enlightened individual in understanding the human condition because this is the absolute, highest objective standard that humanity can ever get to. All enlightened individuals are the same. They live by their own standards to maximize the positive experience of their lives. They can't be brainwashed by anything. This is as high as you can go. Van Gogh said live brilliantly like the brightness of the noonday sun. Find the one or two things that you really love to do that keep you intensely naturally inspired about your life every single day. Pursue whatever you want for your own pleasure without letting the world brainwash you as to what constitutes pleasure. As long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of others, it's all good then to round it all out, if you want to fill up what's left of your whole of existential loneliness, you should have enough of an identity to attract worthy people and lovers who will like and love you for you purely, not for the image you put forth to the world made up of your job description, your car, your clothes, your title, your zip code, etc. Anybody can be cool, fresh, arrogant, strong, cocky, confident, powerful and good looking when they're young but watch them at 40 then at 45 and 50. Most people have lost whatever inspired vitality and grace of youth by the time they're 40. Money can't buy these things but inspired living can. The wise, enlightened ones keep going on with a spring in their step and not much of a rear view mirror to look back at because they're smart enough to know that they have to keep creating their lives every single day. Life is a clean slate every morning when you wake up. This is one great equalizer. You're only as good as you are right now today. Anything you've ever done in the past is gone and the future is an unpainted canvas so it's all about now, living in the moment. If you don't keep actively creating your life all the time, you end up on the scrap heap of humanity just like all the other washed up souls out there regardless of what you may have done in the past how revered you may think you are out in the world based on some reputation you think you have, how much money you have or how many trophies you have on your mantle. I know one guy who was in a famous rock band 30 years ago. Every time I talk to him, he always works it into the conversation at least once. I don't have the heart to tell him to get over it, that was then, this is now. Some people live on past glory. This is a stupid way to go. The permanent imprint on your face and the state of your body don't lie. I can tell who the truly joyful people are right away and it's got nothing to do with what anyone tells me about how great their lives are. Everybody's life is written on their face and body. Millions of people marry because of cultural brainwash because they think that, according to society's formula, this is the path to freedom and happiness but they don't know their own identities yet so as a result, they don't honor themselves day by day. They walk around with this gnawing, empty feeling that they can't put a finger on. They don't know what it is. They're married and working a steady job, society's prescription for happiness yet they don't feel a sense of full, true joy or a sense of ease about their lives like they're doing what they were born to do. When you're tapped into life or riding it, it feels like the spirit of life is coursing through your veins like whatever power there is in your essence slash soul is pulsating through your body and you're intuitively following it, this invisible force within that comes from whatever is divine in the universe that propels you to go for whatever it is you deem important in life. If you're curious about your life in any way at all, you generally should know very early what your archetype or few archetypes are. Who do you see in those momentary fantasy visions you get of yourself in your finest form, being who you feel you were created to be, who you coulda, shoulda been. You have two rules in life. 1. Figure out a way to earn enough bread to keep a roof over your head. 2. Don't interfere with people who don't want you bothering them. To me, there are two types of free spirits, enlightened and unenlightened. Among unenlightened free spirits, there are two types. 1 the one searching for enlightenment thereby exploring life out there and attempting to learn who they really are away from the brainwash of the world. 2. The hippy-dippy, irresponsible, 
druggy drunk hedonist who does what they feel like on a whim probably because they're lazy, unfocused, uninspired, and have no real direction or identity in life therefore nothing constructive to do so they're up for anything. The enlightened free spirit is the person who comes to the realization that they have their own standard of how they should live their lives locked up inside of them that was indoctrinated out of them since they were kids but they're now at a point where they know that the world is wrong, they're right and they will be strong enough to follow what they feel in their souls rather than letting themselves get seduced and brainwashed by the false idols of the world out there. Despite everything ever written about the nature and well-being of man, the only real and hard fast rule is that an inspired, inspirited, mind is what has given man his dominion over the elements. The spirit of man is the most powerful force in the universe, the fountain of youth, the elixir of life. It keeps you young, just about everything else makes you old. It doesn't matter what the source of your inspiration is as long as you're aware that this is the game and you're playing it. You have to feed your soul all the time otherwise it dies a spiritual death. You have to hold on to that youthful spark by staying inspired about your life. If you're a winner in the rat race, so what? You're still a rat stuck in a cage like all the other rats living their limited lives thinking they got something because it's all they know with their caste system of status, popularity and wealth all trying to appear superior to each other. What would you do with your time if money was no object? My version of love is to love the one you're with. Try to be loving in the moment and if things don't work out, you move on. It's no big deal. In any event, you're still alive until you die stuck in your head by yourself no matter how close you get to any other human being. Your own personal sense of inner dignity is way more important than the status or prestige the world might give you. Do you follow your inner voice or the pulse of the world system? Your time is all you own. Do you really do what you want every day? Regardless of age, how young, inspired and free do you feel? How much spring is there really in your step? Do you really enjoy your life away from the brainwash of the world telling you what its version of happiness and success is? How do you figure out how to stay inspired day after day right up until you're old and withering away? How do you keep your youthful spark going all the time? Open your soul up full blast for a little while all the time to clean the natural potential energy out.